Final call for Larice Motorsports Insurance Top Dragster. Final call for Larice Motorsports Insurance Top Dragster. Cody Rome, left side. The finish line supercars. 2022 finish line chassis. Your number 48 qualifier went a 443.5. And Tyler Rudolph here on the right hand side out of Hemlock, New York. The Derek Wolf Trucking 2010 American chassis. Number 55 out of 462.3. Cody Robe and Tyler Rudolph staged up, ready to go. 005 for Rudolph and at the 660 foot mark, it's gonna be 420, 166. Big improvement for the Derek Wolf trucking entry with Cody Robe is gonna run here at 441. So Tyler Rudolph will slide all the way up to number 15 for now. And we're talking about Tenths of a second improvement for him from yesterday. Nice run. Sammy Helms comes up next. Left side of the racetrack out of Locust, North Carolina. The Midland Engine Machine. Horton Chassis. Your number 42 qualifier to 440 with a one. And Nick Revis here on the right-hand side. The Hall River Flooring Machine. Your number 38 qualifier. 437.7. Sammy Helms, the car last night really moved around at the other end of the racetrack today. Makes a pretty clean run, 427. He picks up a couple tenths of a second from last night. And uh, Nick Rivas over there on the right hand side, no improvement off the earlier 437 elapsed time. Eric Stevens next up, left side of the racetrack, the Delta Plumbing Machine. Your number 59 qualifier to 480 with the six. And Danny Waters Jr. here on the right hand side. The Moser Engineering 08 CRC chassis for House of Pain and Sandy Bottom Bandits. Danny, 441.5, put him in the number 46 qualified position. Great to see Danny Waters out here with us on the PDRA Tour. foul between his two qualifying efforts so far. 42-144 there for Eric Stevens for the number 59 spot. Danny Wanders number 44 right now in qualifying. Nicole Zuccarelli left side. The Oakley Motorsports Powered KKC chassis. Your number 32 qualifier in a 432-7. And Ashley Strickland here on the right hand side out of Harrisburg, North Carolina. The DC Fleet Service 2017 American. Ashley had some issues, only went a 4.52 yesterday. 
Definitely, definitely looking for some improvement here in Q2. Into pit area. This is a standby call for MagnaFuel Top Sportsman. Standby call for MagnaFuel Top Sportsman. Get them on the ground ready to go. We'll be calling you here shortly. So the battle between the ladies right here, Nicole Zuccarelli, Ashley Strickland, and Eminem Chassis, supercharged combination here on the right side. Struggled, went 452 in Q1. That's an elite player. Sitting there in the Nap Auto Parts lane. They're in, here comes the tree. Strickland's gonna go, 424, 163. Zuccarelli is 434, 160 miles an hour. Nick Shirky next up left side of the racetrack at originally Maryland. The 2019 race tech sits in the number 55 qualifying position with a 460 with a two. And Gabe Taylor here on the right hand side. The TNT tire service 20 Maddox chassis. Your number 49 qualifier at a 441.9. Gabe Taylor, hiked the front end of the air, sets it down, and 441, the end of the result, varying two thou. Got a really consistent race car. Nick Shirky, still here at the starting line, and he's gonna make a run of it now. And the car's dead. As Soon as it uh, trans brake releases, Shirky's mechanical issues continues. Chaz Silence and Nick Maloney up next. Maloney on the left side of the racetrack out of Brentwood, New Hampshire. The TT Motorsports 2016 Dan Page chassis for pit stop auto and truck. And Nesbitt Racing Engines, your number 19 qualifier so far to 423-1. Chaz Silence here on the right-hand side out of Jacksonville, North Carolina. The Silence Service Center 21 Race Tech for Cameron's Torque Converters. Your number 21 qualifier to 424-5.
And Nick Maloney's doing some driving out there. The car moves over the left-hand side of the group, brings it back in 425. A lap time for Nick Maloney. Chaz Silent. They go 422 here. At 166, so that's going to be Silence's best run so far into the number 16 spot. Nick Maloney to number 20. Burnout starts to more drivers come back here to the starting line and take their turn here at the racetrack this morning. Matthew Buck, left side of the racetrack out of West Palm Beach, Florida. The car they call Blackie, the 24 Miller chassis. Mickey Thompson tires, HRE racing engines, FTI performance, Mazir Inter Engineering, and Brand X Marine. Your number 58 qualifier to 469.2. And Fast Freddy. Freddy Perkins here on the right hand side out of Plainville, Connecticut. The Select Performance 2016 Maddox chassis is your number four qualifier to 381-0. So Buck and Perkins in. Turn into blues. Look at the tire chatter down low for Freddie Perkins in 381. 193 miles an hour, 431, 158 here for Buck. Perkins car, very 3,000 from the last two runs that we've seen. So now, your number 53 and 60 qualifiers. Tim Messer right side out of Newton Grove, North Carolina, the 2016 Race Tech, number 53 at a 450 with a two. Dave Petrovsky, left side, the Glick Fire Equipment 21 Precision Chassis, number 60 at a 483. Messer bumps in, tree fires, she's 28 and 448. He elapsed time for Kimberly Messer, 155 miles an hour. Petrovsky, 6th out red and 417. Car rode hard on the Willie Bar. First 60 feet of the run. Petrovsky's going to be number 15 right now. Next up. James Howardson on the right-hand side. The Jimmy's Garage 04 Race Tech at Wallace, North Carolina. Number 46 qualifier to 441-9. And Kyle Harris, your number two qualifier, backs up on the left-hand side out of Buford, Ontario, Canada. The Horton chassis for double-O permits and services. Hartman Machine Works, Fast Eddie Racewear, and Atchison Machine. He won a 372 with an 8. Yeah, so we're so used to seeing Kyle Harris in the front engine machine at Altered, but they have, uh, they're have getting this car ready for Kyle's son. I'm sure the chassis started out life years ago as a top alcohol dragster machine. That's what it resembles more than anything. And uh, he ran well last night in qualifying. Made a clean, straight run. Let's see what it can happen here. Another fantastic run out of Kyle Harris, the Canadian 373, 395 miles per hour for your number two qualifier. And James Albertson, 442 there at a buck 57. That says something. I, I throw 72 and a 73. Look at the consistency of going that quick. So Kyle yeah. Harris and the crew have that car, I would say, pretty well figured out. To be that fast and that consistent, they've yeah. got their program together for sure. And I'm sure Kyle's not used to driving something just so smooth. I mean, he is normally <laughs> fighting that yeah. altered usually. There's a lot of driving in the altered, and it's just straight as a string in the dragster. Russ Whitlock up next on the left-hand side in a Moxville, North Carolina, the Sunrise Tire 2014 Race Tech. Who's your racing tire on board that machine? He's your number nine qualifier with a 393-0. And Chad Trailer here on the right side at a Providence Forge, Virginia, the par-powered 22 Maddox. For VP Race Fuels, House of Pain, and WTG Automotive. 437 2 was his best effort so far. Landed him in the number 41 qualifying position. So the home state runner on the left hand side, Russ Whitlock, staged up, ready to go. 
The Pro Charge Chevy's making the horsepower to the top of the racetrack. And look at the number, 381 with a 5, 192 the speed. So that's going to be a big time improvement over a tenth of a second for Whitlock. Catapults over the number six spot, Chad Trailer. Makes a uh, run there on the right hand side. Joe Gary up next on the left-hand side out of Boiling Springs, South Carolina, the McCarty Auto Parts 22 American. Line-to-line -line coatings on board that machine. He's your number 27 qualifier to 429.7. And Shannon Roberts here on the right-hand side out of Greenville, South Carolina, the 2010 Race Tech. Number 34 qualifier to Shannon Roberts, 23, Thal Red, 428 there on the right-hand side of the racetrack as Joe Gary runs 428. Roberts picks up five hundredths of a second. Q1 to Q2. Al Miller comes up next on the left-hand side out of Chester, Maryland, the 2013 Miller chassis. It's number 37 in the qualified order, 433.6. And past world champion here on the right-hand side, Larry Roberts out of Lawrence, South Carolina, the Roberts Equipment and Repair 2016 Race Tech. Your number five qualifier. You're on the elite side of things, a 381.4 for Larry. I tell you, in testing or qualifying, if you see Shannon first, you know you're going to see Larry second. So the father-daughter duo back-to-back -back in the right lane. Violent tire shake, Larry pedals it, gets the car to recover into the other end at 405, 190 miles an hour. Al Miller at 432 here, a buck 59. So no improvement for either driver. Larry stays number five right now. Brooke Algary left side out of Bowling Springs, South Carolina, the Fulton Power 22 American chassis. It's number 36, a 432.8. Troy Wonderboy Williams here on the right-hand side at Warrington, Virginia, the Nesbitt Performance Engines 2010 Miller chassis. Hoosier Tire, House of Paint, Weaver's Transmission, Team W Motorsports, Finish Line Racing Fuels, and Killer Ron's Fuel Systems on board Williams Machine. 438.5, his best effort so far has landed him in the number 36, or 43rd qualified position. Seventeen to a twenty-six, and the finish line strike. Four thirty-two of the elapsed time for Brooke Hall, Gary. Four thirty-eight for Troy Williams at about fifty-seven. Williams just out here printing time slips. Back to back, four thirty-eight. Car is just flat out nasty for Troy Williams. Frank Falter, the candy man, here on the right-hand side out of Mount Airy, Maryland, the Noonan-powered hot rod. And Nick Hamilton, left side out of Dresden, Ohio, the diamond chassis for Tim Davis, Fifth Coast Storage, and Hamilton Properties. So, folks, I'll tell you, this is a pair to watch. If Hamilton and Falter go A to B, you could see a new number one qualifier out of this. I'm feeling Frank Falter the quicker car out of the two, though especially what I witnessed in testing yesterday. KC Ingram, that 368 number is very stout. The weather conditions are good. A little bit of a tailwind. Chatters down low for Fulter. They're side by side, and here it's 370, 202 the speed for the Candyman. 
376, Nick Hamilton. Good to see him back behind the wheel after a year hiatus. So right now, Folter will go to number two. Magnafuel Top Sportsman, we need you for Q2 to stage in lanes five and six, please. Magnafuel Top Sportsman, for Q2, we need you to the stage in lanes at this time. Magnafuel Top Sportsman, we need you. Bob Latila on the left side, Connecticut Base 2018 American. Coasted through at a 693. Red line synthetic oil. So Dickey Smith will take the Cool Shirt Systems entry to a 4.56 a lap time. 4.06 at 174 for Bob Botila, and that's going to be his best run in qualifying this weekend. Brian Young's left side. Brian Young's left side at a Hudson, North Carolina, the Young's RV machine. It's number 32 at a 431. Charles Caricia here on the right hand side at Asheville, North Carolina, the line to line coatings, part racing engines, next gen race cars machine. Carisha, that beautiful 2024 next gen chassis. Of course, at a Ray Miller shop. And Ooh, pedal fest out there for Charles. He gets it to the other end at 382. That car was on the center line. Wow. 432, 159 for Brian Yance. But Charles did not want to just abort that run. It was. Pattling the tires, 80 feet of the run. Got some fluid down here on the center of the racetrack, and that pushed Charles to the center line. He pedaled it once, twice, maybe three times, and legged it to the 660 foot mark. So it looks like we are going to have, fortunately, a cleanup out there on the racing surface. So we're going to start moving equipment out there to take care of that. Tractor, scrubbers, you name it. We'll uh, take on the 660 foot race course here at Galat Motorsports Park. So we'll be down momentarily here in the Larice Motorsports Insurance Top Dragster. Red Line Synthetic Oil has been protecting engines since 1979. Our formulas were born in the lab and have been tested on tracks around the globe. From 10,000 horsepower nitro burning engines to 50cc motorcycle engines, we have the lubricant and coolants you need. Our lineup of coolants, gear oils, greases, and motor oils have protected racers and championship quests worldwide. At Red <laughs> We drive tech. We drive the industry. Going beyond the limits and advancing forward. A versatile all-in-one solution. We're here for you every step of the way. 
And that's why you see Fuel Tech everywhere. Welded pumps, regulators, filters, fueling champions. The automotive shop specializing in street and
Listen. It's Buck here, Drag Illustrated Magazine, checking in. It is Wednesday, April 3rd. 2024 hope you're doing well man it's i was just listening to that intro and i'm going true true it's like i do there's nothing i love more than the sport of drag racing i was just telling the guys in the green room before we started like it's literally my favorite pastime talking about drag racing i i literally look forward to this every week and i appreciate you we guys never all guessed us. really were you no. are you surprised i was thinking that's about biggest names in drag racing that's a big, true that's a big unveil right there it is a big unveil. What are you guys doing? JT, show me, everybody. Bring bring up my squad. We got Tyler Crossno in the house. Hey. Um, TC, great to have you here in the heat of the day, which is kind of true. <laughs> it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Central Time, 3 o'clock out your way on the East Coast. You're uh, checking in from the luxurious Galat Motorsports Park. I want to talk about that. But uh, what I don't for those that don't know, and I maybe I'm about to get myself in some trouble here. I don't know how much of this is public knowledge, uh, Tyler, but um, your role has expanded and, and you've brought on some help at Virginia Motorsports Park. My boy Gavin Carter joining the fold there, uh, World Series of Pro Mod race director and all around great guy uh, allowed you to kind of be less uh spread less thin let's say yep. while you maintain your role at the helm of the pdra so what what is the lay of the land on all that stuff right now man i'll be honest it, it's kind of a deal where gavin and i've always said that you know for forever him and i've always been a team um since we were kids at memphis working together um and all the way through so it's cool to have him on board now um it's going to let me be able to be more creative uh put me back into some more of the promoter roles instead of having to be a race director and and having to stay completely glued to whatever's happening on the racetrack um we were planning to be testing right now so i was going to show that off but uh mother nature rained on our parade just a little bit for the second time no way testing. No i know way. everybody's surprised no oh don't talk God. about it tyler i was going to bring this hey. up don't talk about the shit don't <laughs> no, talk I, we're not going to talk, about, talk it. about it we, we're no, going to i'm going to train good. you we ain't talking about any more bad weather shit we, we got to shake that <laughs> hey we, you, well here's the that deal is too. a self-fulfilling prophecy my yeah. friend you'll you'll turn that in to a self foot so don't don't let's it's never there, talk it's about also it. it's wednesday the rain there. does not file follow yeah. tyler or the pdra the Hold rain on. is significant it's but the weather it's, is dicey it's in the spring in it's, on yeah, the east wednesday. coast get it out of the way morning. get it out of the way on wednesday exactly and, and look good. at the rest of the week and i mean we can dive so. right in talking about the weather and right behind this front that's coming Listen. through there right now, you've got some killer weather coming in this Gorgeous. weekend. Screw, so screw we your front. Screw your front. Screw. Wait till you see your the weather almanac. coming in for the I, weekend, I just, man. Listen to me. I'm telling you, I was having this conversation with Mick Snyder. Shout out to my buddy Mick Snyder over in uh, – uh, beautiful Granberry, Texas. Went over to see him uh, for Easter. Him and his wife Lindsay, his daughter Maddie, selling some cookies. So we went over and bought a bunch of cookies, uh, which I did not need. Like I'm on the grind right now, hardcore working out six days a week. Um, but first time back in the gym since I tore my bicep. So I'm actually pretty stoked about it. But went over to see him. So fired up I'm today. I was wondering. No, dude, I am fired up. I steady stay I fired up. But uh, anyways, went over to see Mick and Lindsay, buying some cookies, help uh, Maddie, their their senior in high school daughter, fix her car. Um, anyways, we were talking about weather, Mick and I, and it was so funny. And I don't know if you're in the same category, Tyler, JT, Mike, but my dad, we I vividly remember pulling out of the driveway of my parents' house, truck and trailer loaded up, ready to go racing in the pouring rain to drive 90 miles north to Eddyville, Iowa, somehow thinking be beautiful. And That's it's like, we, if, I'm it. going, if I'm going racing, if the schedule says we're going racing, we're going racing. That's I'm, how not you have checking, to operate. I'm not checking the weather. I mean, yeah. I've never even thought about it. Literally, yeah. I haven't. Never thought about it. You have to racing. operate that way. We've learned that through the World Series of Pro Mod. Tyler, yes. you've got tons of experience with that. You almost have to just... Until it literally starts raining, you operate you as if it's not going to, yep. and and you have to kind of have that mindset because if you if you followed every weather forecast and they get better, the weather, the technology and the forecasts are getting more accurate compared to like when your dad would roll out to, with that kind of mindset. But you do you have to operate as if this is not going to happen, and it, it does put you in a different mindset um, than you know the typical racer or someone else that doesn't have all the things on the line that a, that a race promoter or a, a sanctioning body or whatever has for that weekend. 
I, I think I was trying to come up with something like real poetic or smart from a book I'd read, but I was kind of drawn blank. So I, but I will say that it's, you just got to act as if like you got to yeah. act as if we got blue skies and sunshine and you, you have to prepare for those situations. But that whole like plan for the worst, expect, hope for the best. I don't know. I, I just think that you, Mike's right. You got to roll into the weekend. I mean, going into World Series of Promo. All right, so right now that race tech out of Asheville over here on the right side going to be the 16-year-old of CNC Chemical Company, Will Creaseman, and Gabe Miles. Okay, the trip up from South Carolina. The Max Sherrill built race car. for Gabe, 439 there for Creaseman. Your attention to the pit area, please. We have a Summit Racing Equipment Parts Call, Summit Parts Call. Gabe Taylor is in need of an 1190 motor for Junior Dragster. Gabe Taylor's motor just locked up, and uh, if they do not find a replacement, they are done for the weekend. So Gabe Taylor is in need of an 1190 motor. They're willing to buy it, purchase whatever they need to do. Um, if you can help him out, they are parked down by the racer's gate on the right-hand side. So right now, Cameron Manuel and Tisha Wilson. The Greenbrier excavating AMC powered race tech for the 35 year old project manager and Cameron Manuels, American race car on the left side. Well, unfortunately, the problems continue for Tisha here in qualifying. She's going to coast on down to an 8.12 elapsed time. Manual at 4.25. Going to pick up 600 to the 163. Also, Gabe Taylor is missing their starter. We uh, made a grab Gabe Taylor starter. So they need a motor, and they need a starter. Or just return there. Yeah, maybe even easier on that one. So Brooks McMath, Tony Elrod. Brooks McMath sporting that 582 cubic inch Chevrolet for the 18 year old left hand side. Looks across the racetrack and he will eye the Mr. E's auto sales. Procharged American race car of Tony Elrod, the team out of Michigan. Elrod has been 388 in qualifying. McMath went 422 yesterday. That's a new race car to Brooks here in 2024. The Elrod family has been doing this for quite a long time. McMath rolls the beam. Tony Elrod, how about 390? 187 the speed, so they vary 200 from 
Q1 to Q2. Obviously some confusion on the starting line. Both cars were staged up before the tree was activated. Brooks rolled the beam. So that counted as his attempt in qualifying. Elrod kind of threw his hands up, looked at the starter and says, what are we doing here? Kyle says, well, you're going to get your turn, Tony. Well, the trans brake button matted it and gets it down to that 390 elapsed time. Austin Brown and Michael Combs coming up next. Right side of the racetrack, the Bluff City, Tennessee. Diamond chassis for Combs. Went 459 last night and Austin Brown. Over there in the first federal lane. Fourteen green for Brown, eight foul red for Combs, and Michael Combs for fifty-nine to the four thirty-five elapsed time for Austin. All right, next pair up here in Maurice Motorsports Insurance Top Dragster. It is going to be the Hickory RPM enclosed trailer sales team. Left hand side. Angie Travis. Angie's been 388, 195. Michael White for CNC Chemical Company. Laid down a very impressive. 375 elapsed time last night. Another good run out of both race cars. 375 again for White. They buried 4,000. Angie's going to go 388 here. She buried 3,000. Talking about two stellar performances. Just seen it right there. Now we've got Brian Main and Justin Kirk. Justin Kirk out of Kermit, West Virginia. Naturally aspirated, 648. And Brian Main's affordable transmission entry. Team coming out of Chesapeake, Virginia. Sixth out red for Justin, and he's going to stop the clock at 436. 398, Brian Main, best run of the weekend for him at 180 miles an hour. They're going to pick up two hundreds and dip into the threes. Mike Kopko. Mike Kopko's Pennsylvania Still City Rocket Eminem chassis is going to be here on the left side of the racetrack. Just looks like he has like a trombone hanging off the side of it. Shut up. And uh, we have our 93 hardtail. Jimmy Pershing, that's right, good to see him back. And nitrous fed big block. That car is super clean for the year. Get in there and take a look at it. Very impressive. So Mike Kopko pull up and find the pre-stage beam here on the left hand side. Should be a three second machine.
Topco's going to have problems. 454 here. 445, 168. For Jimmy Pershing. Next up. Tom Reese on the left hand side of the racetrack. Out of Leroy, Ohio, the TNK Automotive Services 99 undercover chassis. Francis Engineering Engine, Snap On Tools, number 44 qualifier so far to 437 2. And the Sunoco Machine out of the L Rod camp here on the right side. Machine having issues again. 438 2 for Tom Reese left side. Defending world champion comes up next on the left side of the racetrack. That's T.G. Paschal. The right trailer's 2012 race tech for Dean's performance when a 429 won that landed him in a number 34, 31 qualified position. And Danielle Gonzalez here on the right-hand side out of Wallingford, Connecticut. The 2023 American chassis, your number eight qualified machine out of 387.3. Danielle's 009 letting go, 386 2 at 187, 426 for TG. So if you were here yesterday, you, see, you saw the machine here on the right-hand side do a monster wheel stand. Rodney Pryor behind the wheel of the House of Pain racecraft chassis and evidently didn't do any damage to it. Goes a 446.8 at 153 miles an hour. 009 red left side, 413. Patrick McMath up next, left side of the racetrack out of Chesapeake, Virginia. The WL Black and Associates 2017 Race Tech is your number 28 qualifier to 427 1.
McMath is trip, zip, let and go for 29 with a four. Five thirty-eight for the machine here on the right side, having some issues. Michael Sullivan on the right side of the racetrack at a Peabody, Massachusetts, the mounted machine. 2013 undercover chassis, number 36 at a 432-1. And your defending world champion backing up on the left side of the racetrack, that's Steve Furr at Harrisburg, North Carolina, the Red Rocket 2013 American chassis for Wright Trailers. Who's your tire? VP Race Fuels, Mosier Engineering, and Part Racing Engines. Steve Furr sat out in Q1. He should march right to the elite side of things right here. Furr's 18, letting go. Sullivan's 21. How about a 381 8 for Steve Furr? 429 3 for Michael Sullivan. But move Steve Furr onto the elite side of things into the number eight spot. Kellen Farmer comes up next. Team Race Tech on the left side of the racetrack. Out of Graham, North Carolina for Hoosier Tire, FTI, and Strange Engineering. Kellen had issues last night. Only one of 422. Definitely an elite player. Has 380 on his dialing board on the car. So that Pro Charge machine, we'll see what they can get it done right here. Kellen's on a rip. To the top end, they go 381.7 at 190 miles an hour. Move Kellen onto the elite side of things, and now we're having all three second field in Larice Motorsports top dragster elite. TJ Harper out of Harrisonburg, Virginia. The Kenny's Automark 2018 Race Tech lines up on the left side of the racetrack. He went a 439-0 that left him in the number 49 qualified position. Harper stops the clocks with a 438, 433 here on the right-hand side. Stacy Hall, right side. The Fulton Power, 21 American chassis out of Spartanburg, South Carolina, is your number 46 qualifier. He went a 436-8. And Brian Anderson, left side of the racetrack, out of Carson, Virginia, the 2023 race tech. Brian Anderson continues to have trouble. Stacy Hall, 436.7. That car is varied one thousandth of a second between two runs.
Vaughn Caulfield on the left side at Lake Placid, Florida, the par power 2019 Maddox chassis for FTI. Caulfield, 20 letting go. 395, 8 or 182. All right, if you see a blue golf cart riding around with a pink sign on the front, they're doing a 50-50 raffle for Henry Underwood. So make sure you buy some tickets and help support Henry's fight. drive tech we drive the industry going beyond the limits and advancing forward a versatile all-in-one solution we're here for you every step of the way and that's why you see fuel tech everywhere Filters, fueling champions. Max Butcher first up, left side of the racetrack out of Doylestown, Ohio. The Doylestown Destroyer, 2003 Corvette for Sweden Motorsports, a bruisey transmission, and Butcher and Son Demolition. Tim Papp here on the right-hand side. The Papp Auto Body 2016 Corvette, the Nesbitt-powered Parker Max Tune Machine. It's number seven in the qualified order at a 384.6. It's got reigning 
elite top sportsman champion, Donnie Urban, crew chiefing this machine. Here comes the matchup between the Corvettes of Butcher and Pap. First pair out, Q2 in top sportsman. Butcher's car over there on the left side. He's ran super gas with it. He's ran big money bracket races, top sportsman, you name it. Max Butcher. Likes to go out and go drag racing. Fifteen green for Max, and he will get there at 490, 340 miles per hour. Ten Pap, 381, picks up 300, a buck 92. So that red Corvette out of Illinois will set number five here in qualifying right now. Tim Moldar holds the top spot at 372 from last night. That's uh, low ET and top speed for Moldar. Brian Wise next up on the left-hand side of the racetrack out of Ashland, Virginia, the 67 Chevy 2. Sits number 51, when it's 735. Not the performance we expect out of that hot rod. And Joe Robichek here on the right-hand side, your number 21 qualifier. A 421-4, put him in that position. Mazir Enterprises, K&N Filters, Hoosier Tires, and Sonny's Racing Engines on board the Camaro, right side of the racetrack. Brian Wise struggled in opening qualifying session from last night. Pedals hit, the car's moving all over the racetrack early on. It's 475 for Brian at 152. Joe Robichuk, no problems, and he actually improves 418 here at 168. Good run for Joe Robichuk. Next up, Al Davidowski here on the right-hand side of the racetrack out of Columbus, New Jersey, the 2010 GXP. And Brian LaFlamme, left side out of Gilbert, Arizona, the Big Stuff Total Management 1967 Ford Mustang. LaFlamme struggled in the opening round of qualifying, only went an 835 coasting through. 4.19.7 for Davidowski. Look at LaFlamme's Mustang, 002 and 373, 9. 196 miles an hour, Brian LaFlamme laying down a very nice run there. 419 for David Alski, and Brian LaFlamme will rock it to number two here in qualifying. Was definitely swinging for Moldar, 72 elapsed time. That 372 number we talked about just a few moments ago. Chad Trailer comes up next, left side of the racetrack out of Providence Forge, Virginia. The Orange Crush 63 Corvette owned by Keith Cox. He's your number 25 qualifier to 425.9. And J.C. Garcia here on the right-hand side at Orlando, Florida. 
the Piranha Racing 08 GTO. Chad Trailer, your defending world champion in back half, top sportsman. Trailer had some tire shake down low, it looked like, in the Corvette. 434 for Chad Trailer, 167. JC Garcia, the Pontiac GTO. 454 here at 154. John Benoit comes up next, left side of the racetrack. Started out most of qualifying as you, your number one qualifier. Dropped back to the number four spot with a 379-1 for that Benoit Electric. Fickle built, buck powered, Schweitzer Dynamics Camaro left side. And right side, Dwayne Silence out of Jacksonville, North Carolina, the Silent Service Center machine. 68 Camaro's your number eight qualifier, 384-3. Fulton Power Plant. On board that pickle built machine. Good side-by-side -side drag race to the top of the track. They go at 379 for John Benoit. Camaro, 201. Dwayne's going to go 386 here. So John Benoit, number four. Dwayne Silence, number eight. In qualifying. Brian Warner comes up next, left side of the racetrack. The Morrow's Auto Service, 68 Camaro for Bruzy Transmissions. Your number 23 qualifier to 423-1. John Schmidt here on the right-hand side. The orange Camaro, beautiful machine. Had some issues yesterday. That Jansen Parrot hot rod. So unfortunately the problems continue for Jonathan Schmidt there in the orange Camaro. Brian Warner at 424, 169 the speed. So Warner's Morrow's auto service entry laying down very consistent elapsed times here in qualifying this weekend. Barry Danilek up next, left side of the racetrack at Amoresville, North Carolina, the 68 Camaro. It's number 13 out of 398.4. And Tommy Brown, right side, the Brown Line Construction 2012 Camaro. Your number 14 qualifier to four flat.
Jerry Daniluk, that car got violent off the starting line and he is out of power and Tommy Brown's all over the top end trying to hold on to it. Man, oh man, the Brown Line Construction Chevrolet about got all kinds of crossed up at four flat. 185 miles an hour and I'm not sure if Tommy Brown was going for the chutes and got a little too much brake pedal on or what was going on down there. But I thought for sure that uh, it was gone. So good job to Tommy Brown holding on to his race car and they will both exit the top of the racetrack safely here. And two more drivers going back to the starting line. Dan Christopher here on the right hand side out of Raymond, New Hampshire, the TT Motorsports 09 Cobalt for Southern New Hampshire undercar. Nesbitt Performance Engine, your number 50 qualifier so far to 635.5. And Bruce Thrift out of Waycross, Georgia on the left hand side, the Color Me Gone 2018 GTO, Par Racing Engines, Chassis Engineering. 383 for Bruce Thrift, your number seven qualifier. with a consistent hot rod, 384-1. Dan Christopher goes a 428-8. We move Christopher all the way up to the 28th spot in qualifying. Tim Lawrence, left side of the racetrack. Out of Princeton, West Virginia, the 2013 Camaro they call the Phantom. Your attention to the pit area, please. We have a Summit Racing Equipment Parts Call. Summit Racing Parts Call for a Bruno drive, a Bruno drive. Charles Caricia and top dragster is looking for a Bruno drive. If anybody can help him out with that, it'd be greatly appreciated. Once again, a Summit Parts call, Bruno drive for Carl's, uh, Charles Caricia, excuse me, and top dragster. Jackie Bennett, I believe, here on the right-hand side. out there 421 and 83 miles an hour Bennett's car wow 402 166 for Tim Lawrence he had some issues in the left hand side of the racetrack but I thought for sure that Bennett was just going to abort the run when I could see the tire chatter marks go towards the center line got back in it hiked it up brought it to the center lane or the center of the racetrack then it pulls back left again absolutely a handful yeah, I don't think he was ready for all that bite out there on no, the starting line. That was, My goodness. That was wild. <laughs> That'd be a good one for the route. It's a replay. Ken Ratzloff comes up here on the right hand side. He's your number 40 qualifier to 463 with a four in the 53 Studebaker. Scotty Wise, left side of the racetrack, the 63 split window. He's your number 37 qualifier to 447. Scott Wise, Ken Ratzloff squaring off right here. Scott Wise goes into a uh, lot of wheel speed at the head of the throttle, so he's going to coast on down with his Corvette to a 743 elapsed time. Ken Ratzloff at 473, or excuse me, 437. That's going to be improvement for him to the number 34 spot.
Brian Tiff, left side of the racetrack. The Schwinn Motorsports 2020 Corvette, Charlie Buck horsepower, 941 cubic inches of it. Jerry Bickle built that machine, m and Transmission, Schweitzer Dynamics, and Mark Smith, Smith Racing. He's your number 15 qualifier to 405. Split window here on the near side has not been down the racetrack yet. Brian Tiff, he did the, uh, had the tuning duties. Previously on this Corvette, you see the left-hand side out of the Schwe Motorsports camp. Chris Urges was the driver, and Chris, you know I'm gonna step out of the driver's seat. Brian says, I'll take the opportunity. He's done it before, and not doing a bad job of it today. He's 41 green and 385. They got it through the other end at 181 miles an hour. That's gonna be their best run of the weekend and qualifying it. 426 for the Corvette over there in the Nap Auto Parts lane at 155. So that moved Brian all the way from number 15 to number 10. Top 14 cars on the elite side in the three second zone. Chad Morrison coming up next, left side of the racetrack, the 57 Beller Chevrolet out of Statesville, North Carolina, your 33rd qualifier to 433-2. And Junior Ward here on the right-hand side, out of Goad, Virginia, the barn find, 67 Chevy 2. Driven oil products, Battery Barn of Virginia, l and Race Trans, Speed Tech, and Nitro Supplies on board. This thing shook violently the first time they had it out. Well, some parts and pieces coming across uh, the racetrack from Wards Nova. It's going to go 432 and 162. Chad Morrison goes 444 here. The uh, 57 Bel Air. Mark Reese. The Mustang out of North Dinwiddie, Virginia, left side of the racetrack, your number 37 qualifier to 439.4, and Trey Garrison out of Shelby, North Carolina. All right, tire center, 70 duster, and this is a wild looking piece backing up here on the right side of the racetrack. First time we've seen it on the racetrack this weekend. Absolutely stunning 1970 duster. Looks like Trey's guys maybe fixing something in the car as he's taking his time getting up to the starting line. Mark Reese got the top bulb on. He's ready to go. Yeah, Trey Garrison's duster just super clean. Not a sticker on that machine. Alvaray tire center entry. Problems on the starting line for Garrison. Mark Reese will take his Mustang to a 426 run. 165 the speed for the truck driver out of Dinwiddie, Virginia. 590 there for Trey Garrison.
Fast Freddie Perkins comes up next on the right-hand side of the racetrack out of Plainville, Connecticut, the Batmobile 1957 Chevrolet. Select performance, Mickey Thompson tires, Maxima Racing Oils, and A&C Performance. He only coasted through at a 7.54 last night. Up against Jeff Brooks, the Kaiser Compressors 51 Henry J. Jeb 4 Racing Machine is your number 19 qualifier to 416 with a 5. It's got a Sunny's Power Plant, 762 cubic inches underneath the hood scoop. Perkins, 791 cubic inches underneath that plexiglass hood scoop. So Jeff Brooks, the Kaiser Compressor, Henry J. Staged up, ready to go. Problems for Freddie Perkins. You've seen him uh, shatter really hard. He'll coast to a 5.17 elapsed time. Brooks at 4.10, picks up by 600 from yesterday at 176 miles an hour. So Jeff Brooks into the number 17 spot here in qualifying. So past world champion backs up on the left-hand side. That's Nick Maloney out of Brentwood, New Hampshire. The TT Motorsports 69 Camaro for Pit Stop Auto and Truck, Nesbitt Performance, and Jerry Bickle built that machine. But man, look at the Nova over here, Derek. Derek Brown behind the wheel at a Winston-Salem. They call this machine Lady D out of the Brown Motorsports camp. Yeah, Lady D is beautiful, I'll tell you that. Yanko, 69 Nova, 665 nitrous fed Chevy. Brought out nasty. Just soon, as soon as I seen it roll through the water box, I wasn't even sure whose car it was, but it's like, that's a nice piece. Yeah, if you get the opportunity, it's over in their camp. Check that thing out, man. Beautiful hot rod. by side drag race brown at 427 that's a stellar run 168 miles an hour maloney's at 428 165 right alongside of him they're going to be number 29 and 31 here in qualifying All right, if you're a crew member helping out one of these machines this week, and please stay with your car in the staging lanes until it's your turn to run. Don't come up and stand on the starting line. We don't need any more bodies up on the starting line. Creates a potentially hazardous situation. So if you're a crew member, just stay back with your car until it's your turn to run. Steven Evans, left side, the outsider, 2018 Camaro for Corey's Custom Fab, Keeler Motorsports, and Steven's Property Management. Number 40 qualifier to 4.43.5, and Dennis Gaborio. This Mustang out of Millbury, Massachusetts, was dancing all over the place yesterday in Q1. Redline Oil Precision Turbo on board his machine. He went through at a 4.70, looking for a lot better performance here this morning. Dennis Gaborio gets it back to the uh, all four wheels. That car made a hard, violent move right at half track. And you can see the right rear tire come up in the air. And look at the chatter marks all the way out to, I would say, nearly 200 feet. Stayed with it, was trying to get the car to just drive out of it. And did not like that at all. So Dennis Gaborio, uh, wow, go back and check himself after that one, I would say.
Robbie Stewart up next, left side of the racetrack out of Strasburg, Virginia. The RS Equipment and Fleet Services, 90 Cutlass. He's your number 42 qualifier to 453 with a one and Ron Whitlock. The first car on the outside of the elite side of things. He won a 4054 in this 2013 GXP for Sunrise Tire. Whitlock, 408 with a six. The no 26 reaction time, not going to improve his qualified position. 468 with a seven, no help for Stewart either. Ronnie Dotson comes up next, left side of the racetrack out of Brown Town, Virginia, that beautiful 04 Grand Am. And Dan Germano here on the right hand side. The Royal Purple Oil 68 Camaro, par power plant underneath the hood scoop. Braille battery, Miller welders, Hoosier racing tire, and NGK spark plugs. So Ronnie Dotson, Dan Germano, pre-stage bulbs are lit. They're working their way in. The Pontiac left side, Chevrolet right side. And Dan Germano is going to get there at 423. 166 miles an hour for Germano, 433 for Ronnie Dotson. Now here comes your number one qualifier. That's Tim Molnar here on the right-hand side of the racetrack, the high-maintenance 68 Camaro for TRM Manufacturing, Jim Attachments, ARC Glass, or Gases, with a Billy Hour Power Plant, 959 cubic inches. He won a 372.6 on his first effort, put him in the number one spot. Jeff Belnick pulling double duty, running top sportsman and pro 632 here this weekend. Jeff out of Hubbard, Ohio, the exotic Fab 02 Avenger for Greenbrier Excavating. He's your number 20 qualifier, a 414.7. Look at Moldar's Camaro, Tim Moldar, 375, 199 miles an hour. The 416 for Jeff Melnick, the exotic fabrication Avenger. To uh, the number 20 spot. Wow, looking down at the starting line, Jeff. Simons. Well, that's a tough break. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> uh, well, that's oil. <laughs> a, a ton of oil out of Jeff Simmons, excuse me, Camaro. Simmons Construction Machine, and he ran 391 last night to put him number 12. So they got a quick hot rod, and not sure what, uh, what went awry there other than a uh, massive oil leak, whether it's a, uh, a fitting that popped off or something, but we will be down for a bit after we get 
Kirsten urges down on a single run. Get this cleaned up. Contained from the burnout box just to uh, just past the starting line. But it is a mess, that's for sure. So right now, all eyes on that Pontiac Firebird. The auto detailer by trade calls Warren, Ohio home. Charlie Buck horsepower. Right the hood, 762 cubic inches strong. Struggled in the opening round of qualifying yesterday. And they are right back to uh, the drawing board again. So Carson is going to motor on down to a 791. Elapsed time, and the Power Boss will take the racetrack. And we'll go into cleanup mode here at Galat Motorsports Park. Get back into qualifying top sport for momentarily. Racing is a lot of fun. tech we drive the industry going beyond the limits and advancing forward a versatile all-in-one solution we're here for you every step of the way and that's why you see fuel tech everywhere Regulators, filters, fueling champions. Listen, I've never had any problem expressing my opinions, but what we're doing here is bigger than that. These are... 
I appreciate how far we've come, but I want more for this sport, and I'll fight for it. That there's it just like you said, this place is awesome as a facility, but not even that. Man, this place is awesome as a like racing town. Like we yeah. went out, we've been out to dinner three times since we've been here. All three flyers were out on the front desk. People were asking, "Hey, y'all are y'all are here for the race this weekend, right?" And I'm like, "All right." Like everybody knows PDRA is in town, and that's, and that's so disappointing I mean, when you go to towns that, that, that and they don't know. Oh, nobody, nobody yeah. knows. It, it, it is. is it's such a letdown. And it like is. from my seat, I'm like, "Well, damn, I bought the wrong radio ads," <laughs> but. <laughs> But it's been really good, and, and this place is special. And, and, man, so many people have won here. I see Johnny Placino in the comments. I, they almost had to rename this place Placino Motorsports Park for a while because <laughs> that man won everything here. But, man, it's a special place. And, and to, to, to table up with their staff, uh, with our PDRA crew, and, and, man, we always put on a good show. But, man, it like you he's said, saying, Virginia he's saying, special, but the lots are right there. Placino saying that uh, Pro Stock is going to go 390s. Could we finally it, see that? It, it would be marvelous. Only I'm shot, not lie. Folks. Well, and I'll be honest. It's such a – and I'm going to not knock Pro Stock, but I'm going to have their back a little bit. They don't get to race in those conditions very often. Yep. And when they do, the racetracks are so different for good weather conditions like this. There's more glue on the racetrack. It's tighter. And that just kind of fights on a Pro Stock car completely different than it does a Pro Nitrous or a Pro Boost car. And – the, you know the the folder of data for them and that in those conditions is very very narrow um whereas you have a ton of data to go out and go 405 408 anything like that um in some normal conditions so i really cloudy chance of rain so i got here probably cloudy <laughs> chance of rain probably cloudy chance of rain yeah it's I mean, pretty, it, it, it seems like it would be hard to screw up yeah you know? yeah I, and what, I my favorite thing about weather people is, and I don't remember this lady's name or I would call her out, but back home in Kirksville, Missouri, where I was born and raised, like 10 years ago-ish maybe, uh, the weather lady, the, the meteorologist for KTVO TV3 uh, in Kirksville, which was like the local news station. And it was like, it's a big deal. Like the website, everybody like lives on it. it it's a kind of an impressive thing that they have going. But I would always... Like if there was a tornado warning or whatever, or a, a tornado, uh, what's the other word? Not warning, tornado. Watch. Uh, watch. Um, she would be on TV and almost like drooling. Like, please, God, let a tornado wipe this place. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, like, because she wants to report on it so <laughs> oh, bad. Like, yeah. the, you know, there is, there is a good chance that an F5 tornado is going to drop down in the city square and we will all be running for our life. Listen for freight trains. That's what's coming. And it's like, I mean, you could just feel her passion and you're like, right, okay, lady, we don't want this to happen. Right? Like, uh, it's like, lock your doors. Stay they don't away do from watches. windows. They don't like, do watches out there in the Midwest. Me? It just goes straight down. No. It just goes to get in the damn cellar or basement quickly. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Y'all don't have days. basements out there. I right? know we don't. Those days, basements are a Midwest thing. We don't. Yeah. Nobody's got a basement in Texas. No. Yeah, yeah. We do. Yeah, Everybody has a was great. In Missouri. We got a basement and then a storm shelter in the <laughs> right. basement, and then a, a bomb shelter and then yeah. a bunker yeah. secondary. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. that's that's your sign, JT. You might need to get out of there. Yeah, oh no. my God, it's snow today. No chance. What? Again. It snowed again today. Yeah. See, there you go. How many more signs do you need, man? Yeah, I'm sick of it. Tyler, let's talk a little bit about Virginia Motorsports Park. I think we had the oh, news come out yesterday. So, so oh, yeah. we wanted to talk weather, and then yeah. we go straight to uh, Virginia. Yeah. Stop it. It, it makes <laughs> me <count. laughs> Crazy weather makes me think VMP. So let, let's go straight to that. <laughs> hey, the news everybody has out. to have a calling card, okay? I'm yeah, wearing mine strong. Well, this kind of ties in with it, too. The, the, the whole schedule announcement that came out yesterday. Oh, yes. It's a two-day deal, which obviously – we're proponents of because that's what we did at the at the pro superstar shootout yep. packing three days of or three runs of nitro into one day um tell us about that how'd that come about what are your feelings on that and you know weather related to me really only is the is the only potential downfall if weather does strike you know what's the what's the game plan there but other than that i think it's a fantastic idea something that i think we'll, we'll see more of and you guys are kind of the guinea pig for those yeah. that don't know, the NHRA dropped the news uh, yesterday, I believe, that the uh, forthcoming, fast-approaching NHRA Virginia Nationals would feature a 
kind of a first ever two day event format. Um, yes. I don't know that they've ever done that before, and that would include three qualifying sessions on Saturday, uh, followed by elimination rounds on Sunday. So, anyways, if you did, in case you didn't know what was thank going you, on, Wes. that's that's uh, the thank you. He, thank you. He, he's not yes. he's not real good at delivering the news. No, Correct. I just he's like you. He thinks that everybody knows everybody. Yeah. Like JT yeah. will meet a Wes is the anchor. stranger and tell you know Jim, my neighbor, and it's yeah. they're like, <laughs> no, don't. Oh, Jim, your neighbor, dude. Well, you I'm will. Saudi Arabia. Yeah. No, it's uh, anyways. JT or gosh, dang it. Tyler, like I always say, anybody hardcore enough to be watching this show is well, true, generally true. knows the, well, and I, the I goal. Agree. Hold on. The goal here is new fans in the sport listening to what we have <laughs> to say. He's a meteorologist these days. I yeah. Come he's on. Weird. I'm glad the news anchor, the lead anchor can come in and, and bring the facts. You're Somebody, somebody's got to pick it all together. Back You're good job, Wes. Yeah, back to me. All right, cool. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, I was kind of like, oh, boy, this is worry because I'm the very one that same thing. You look at it and you go, oh, boy, what happens if you get rain on Saturday? Then then what's the game plan? So, of course, that was a little bit of thing that I brought up in the conversation was like, all right, we're we're kind of worried about what's what does this happen? Um, but they the NHRA says they have a game plan for that if, if that does become in a, become a problem. Um, but I think it'll be neat. Um, we've we've all had that conversation of it's really hard to get a fan and keep a fan engaged at our, at drag racing at times because of how spaced out our sport can be basically, sure. whether it's track prep, whether it's oil downs, whether whatever it may be, um, four day formats, four day formats, anything like that. So the condensing of the show, I think is a good thing. Um, the only thing that I worry about is, is, is I mean, and that's really not even a worry. Um, it, it's kind of like the, Hey, you know, the, the diehard I'm going for the weekend fans that have, that have been going since I was in diapers and, and we were all doing that. You know, you worry what happens there. Uh, but at the same time, everybody will adapt and overcome. Uh, and, and like we've all said, we've talked about earlier, you know, you can only control what you can control and controlling the narrative and building this building that vibe that we all are chasing as promoters to, to make a make a day feel like it's bigger than really what it is. And I think that's what three runs will do on Saturday. And then you come back on Sunday for, for four rounds of eliminations. And and they do a really good job of running a good tight ship, um, whether that is sportsman classes that will run on Friday or with whether they're ahead of eliminations at that point, wh- wherever they are in, in that. We haven't really looked at the, at the individual run schedule yet. But being able to put that all together along with Pro Mod, Mount Motor Pro Stock, um, and everything else that's going to come to that event, you know, I really think it's something positive. I think there'll be growing pains. There, there's going to be people that don't like it. There's going to be people that do like it. And I'm excited for, and as weird as it sounds, I'm excited for us to kind of be the first one on the NHRA trail to get to hold that because, like you said, I think two, three years down the road, we're going to see more of that. That's what but, I, That's where I was sure. going with it. First thing, do you think that – so they came to you with this concept? Uh, yes, they, oh, they cool. actually came to us and said, hey, what are y'all thought? What are y'all's thoughts on doing this? We, we were and, told and or we've that. heard that that the racers wanted this or were I've wondered or, that as well. They voted wondered, on this with an HRA and approved it. And then I guess an HRA then came to you after yep. that vote. Yeah. And, and, and which I, we kind of came in on the on the back side of the racer side of it. I think that happened before we kind of got into it. But at the same time, I think it's a really good deal um, and from a promoter standpoint. Let's be honest it's a lot easier to sell two days than it is to sell three days. Um, yeah. Especially now with baseball and kids and football and all the, the things you can we do live in the world yeah. that, like that's that. easy to sell. You know, like, it's like easier Jim for Park's us idea. to sell two days. You know, I like says, it. He says uh, three qualifiers on Friday, last chance qualifier early on Saturday, and then elimination starting Saturday afternoon with late rounds I, under the lights and Sunday makeup. I, I, I'm, I'm I like day. that. I'm a fan of Saturday racing. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I see. Do you think that this is something that we'll see, like, to your point, Tyler, that this is like a, a format that they're, I mean, did they express to you like an ultimate vision? Like, hey, by 2026, we think that, you know, 50% of our events could be two day happenings or not really. No, um, I think I think ours is kind of a trial to see, mm-hmm. hey, how does this go? And, and I'll be honest, I, I'm fully on board with that. I think it can be something that's good. Um, we all know this, you don't know until you try it. And, and if you don't try it, you're never going to know. Um, I like the proponent of, of a Friday, Saturday show. Um, I, there's something about racing 
finals on Saturday night. I don't know why. Just in front and, of the fans. You know, yes. that's, that's what I want. But you know, Saturday yeah. is your big day. Saturday so is your big why day. not try to pack as much into that as possible? I think yeah. you could go either way with it. I do you think, think so. it's a do you think it's a savings for the race teams? Or and, and what does it do for the economics from your standpoint as far as a promoter or a racetrack? I just wonder what the you know what the uh, benefit analysis is on both sides. I know for a fact that that let's be honest, we're all trying to to cut expense and, and raise income. That, that's the, that's the glory of business. Um, in my opinion, I want to know how that looks on the racer side. Um, does that help the race teams? I don't know. You, from I mean, from my standpoint, are you not having to logistically put everybody in the in the hotels on on Thursday, and now can you come in on Friday? Does that save everybody three hotel nights, a race, or or what or flight difference or whatever that may be um you know i I don't really know i I want to see what that does because i think personally that will be a very big determining factor of does this come back to more races or is this a one-time deal and we go back to to what it's been in the past from a racetrack standpoint um your payroll will be different um you know you don't have to open as many gate windows on a friday now um, you don't have to bring in a, as much things as you would for a pro session on a Friday night. So I, I would say that you're probably, I, I'm going to say it can be a wash on a racetrack because I feel like you may have to ramp up a little bit heavier on a Saturday because now you're thinking my Friday crowd is yes. now going to roll to Saturday. So you're probably going to overstaff your Saturday compared to where you were. But I, I'm anxious to see the racer side because I think that's, like you said, we had heard that it was a, a voted on deal with the racers. So now at that point, if it's not any savings to them, do they continue to say, Hey, we want to do this or, or do they go back to the three day format? If there's gotta be it? like, there's I, gotta I, be something. There's gotta be something that they're pursuing, right? Like is so, Q3 under the lights for it is probably. Yeah, yes, have I, to, be, so. to my knowledge, Q3 will be under the lights. We have, we kind of requested that as well on our side that, Hey, let's, let's do Q3 under the lights and, and make that a show. We, we were supposed to use our Musco lights that we didn't get to do in 2022. Um, so we kind of voiced that up like, hey, we want to have a night session so we can do our light shows with music and stuff like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that that was that's going to be lit. Like, I need to put that on my schedule. Yeah, literally lit. Lit, <laughs> lit. literally. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Have you guys seen you the video? Like, do you guys know what, are, <laughs> what I'm talking about? Like, have you seen the deal with, with VMP's lights? Like, you're kind of I staring. I that, hadn't you, Mike? Yeah. Right? I, I like mean, it's sick. That. I mean, it's like a straight up – nightclub stadium. so basically yeah that was like, okay yeah that was a couple so we, years ago right yes so I thought we've it was had something it. recent that's why oh I was no we've had it for a couple of years up. um so we what we do is we just send a song or a clip of a song to musco lighting and they will take the song break it down into their light system and as the song plays over the pa system the lights will, on the racetrack will actually go with the beat of the music yeah, they so do that. It's here. actually, actually really cool. They do uh, the whole Christmas deal for, at uh, yes. Charlotte Motor Speedway. I think it's probably based off that same. My kids wanted system. me to wire some of that shit up for like five years. They're like, Dad, we want dancing lights. <laughs> Can you make a dancing light display? I'm like, Listen. your kids are so demanding. Yeah, like I love you guys get a lot. At all. Like, no, because then we got to take them down. Yeah, let's just <laughs> drive the problem. Around. Let's just drive around until we find somebody else yeah, that's got the old right. radio station sign in their in their driveway. That's what all, that's all you're looking for. You drive around and you look for a 94.5. If you see a sign that says some number, you know, you go. Hey, and all there's right, always one. That, watch their lights. There's always one, too. You don't have to be that guy. You just have to no. know the guy. Yeah. Right. You just have to know. Or we made friends with one. When my kids were growing up, there was one in Kirksville that we would always go to, and we'd roll every night. Max wouldn't go to bed. My little boy turned 16 yesterday, but he literally, during the Christmas season, wouldn't go to bed if we didn't go see the dancing lights. So I'd drive him over there, you know, every single night, and we'd sit there, and he had, we had to stay long enough for him to hear this certain song, like uh, Hot Chocolate from uh, – that train movie with Tom Hanks. That's a question. That's as awful as saying no. <laughs> yeah. The pol- yeah. I'm, I'm not a big no guy. You know, I'm a, I'm a you yes guy, that. man. Uh, but anyways, uh, what's it called? The, the Orient Express. That's not it. Polar, Polar Express. Express. Polar Express. Uh, slightly different I had to think movie, I was like, Orient but... Express. That's not <laughs> no. it. So Tom Hanks wasn't in the Orient Express. I don't think Express, you can even say that. You would have sat there a long yeah. time. Yeah. Edit, edit that part yeah. out. Bro. Yeah. So yeah. Polar, Please anyways. But that those deals like it blows your mind. Like in oh, that yeah. like I think about and that the point I was gonna make was it's crazy that technology and stuff like that exists exist in our family neighborhoods. 
But like, it's crazy. We don't see much of that. Like, if you go to a PBR event, laser lights, pyro, mm -hmm. crazy. You go to a much the same thing. Like, you go to if you go to a nightclub, they've got freaking lasers and fog machines and flat strobes and all this stuff. And I'm going, man. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the booze, yeah, some of these places that we go, especially facilities like yours, like that could you could really do something special, like the intro for a class, you know, like top fuels coming up and you've got some light program in and I don't know, it's just that's where we miss it. We miss the mark a little bit, is just in production value. Like yep. and unfortunately, as good as it get, as getting everywhere else, like all those things I just mentioned, like you see some of those drone shots and helicopter shots of an F1 race. They got fucking Ferris wheels. They got a, a design in the water. They've got, I mean, it's insane. Like root, every roof the sphere. is branded. The sphere. The sphere. I mean, yeah. it's just, and obviously we ain't building some $6 billion planet. Yeah, we are. But Get a sphere might. up at VMP. Yeah. Right. Oh, no. We could do a small no. one. Talk I got a snow globe. Hey, look, we got a light. snow globe. We, we could backlight it with a flashlight. <laughs> yes. You know? And <laughs> Sphere. Yeah, put it on and then put it Done. on the, the, the Megatron and hold the camera real close to it. Perfect. Hey, it's all Thanks. about the angles. Done. It's all yeah, about man. the angles. <laughs> Have you seen those people who take pictures of model cars and try real hard to make them look real? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you know who like, does a good job of that? Yeah. Gary Rowe Gary, with, well, his, with his RC say. cars. Sometimes I'd have to double take because he's got the I whole I remember doing that as a up. kid. I, we, I remember my dad, he had this uh, 69 Camaro that we were having. Um, I think he was yes. having it back half. It was, it already had a chassis, but a bunch of it was mild steel and it was a real roof and quarters, steel roof and quarters car. And we took it to this guy in Illinois somewhere. Uh, Steve Comstock was this dude's name. And it was like my first experience with our race car, our family's like pride and jewel, like pride jewel, um, it being in race car jail, chassis shop jail. Oh, so, it's such a depressing thing. So the car was over there for like months and the racing season is looming and my dad is like losing his mind and we end up going over there and my dad shows up and says, listen, we are, I'm not leaving here without that car and it's going to be done. So we literally slept on the floor of this chassis shop, my mom and, I, and my little brother. We literally slept in the floor uh, of the front room of this dude's chassis shop and my dad and him worked day and night, day and night for days days and days and days on end to finish this car and i mean we ate at the same little dive restaurant every day breakfast lunch and dinner like it was it, it was quite the experience but i would pass the time my dad uh my mom would get me those uh, disposable cameras right and i would bring my hot wheels the ones that i brought with me to play with and i'd set them up and do like a photo shoot yeah do a photo shoot, get down real close, low, try to make it look like a real car. I mean, I probably have those photos somewhere, man. It was, uh, was those were the story. days. It was, a, <laughs> what, what, I, we we're just talking about taking pictures of cars. J, JT, ago. where's your chassis shop store? <laughs> I don't have Yeah, that's right. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Take him off the camera, bro. Take him off. <laughs> yeah. He got <laughs> Anyways, I have no ah. idea what we were talking about. Oh, yeah. Is that all we it takes, about, by the way, to get kicked off? Yeah, yeah, well, no, JT's never been kicked, rock, kicked off. That's the first yeah. threat yeah. of being kicked off that I've ever heard. So we're oh, really yeah, entering not, new yeah. grounds here. I'm so proud. <laughs> oh, I love JT. But back to VMP, talking about the lights and everything yeah. in 22. But you guys didn't have a national event last year, right? And we're returning this year. So, like, was this altered schedule part of that discussion? Or this is something that came along after you guys had already re-upped and decided to... I mean, I guess maybe tell us how the national event got back on the schedule at BMP. Yeah, um, this is a new, I, I will say the, the schedule deal was brought in uh, after everything was done. Um, we had kind of had discussions about what do we do with qualifying? Are we still doing a Friday night session and all that originally? Um, but now with, with this new deal, um, I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. But like we talked about, it'll be good. And then, you know, bringing the national event back, uh, those things are special to a racetrack. Let's just be honest. Um, there's only a certain amount of, of facilities on the planet that get to host one of those events every year. Um, to get that back on the schedule for us at Virginia is special. Um, it helps with, with many things across across our business, uh, from sponsorships to partnerships to, in you know, just the local economy, our, our county, uh, being able to, to sell more hotels, sell more, more food at our local restaurants, anything like that. You know, it, it's really a, a big deal for for our, our community and, and our and our area really gets around it. Um, you know, this this year ours is in June. Uh, it's in the summer, but whenever it had been in May, the 
the high school and all of the county schools closed for the the Friday day of the national. So I mean, it was really cool for for to see everybody in the county really just get behind it, and, and to have that back on our schedule is a cornerstone. Um, everybody knows how how important those are, um, and those events are really special. So we're looking forward to it. We're glad to be back on the NHRA tour, and we hope to stay there for years to come. Do you think that? Well, thank you for that, because and I don't know how much you can tell us, right? Because but it's long since been the story or like everybody's kind of like those of us that are on the inside or whatever. We talk about how the NHRA needs to update their business model. You know, they try to use a one size fits all approach with all these different tracks. Times have changed, blah, 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 blah. We've seen tracks go away. Um, we've seen tracks opt not to do an NHRA mm -hmm. national event, which I think you know, we did always. That. Yeah, you did that. I'll and say I we were that, we were the one one of the ones that said that. And, and I think hard. that that is, but that is a huge statement, Tyler, like, because I'm, I'm with you. Like my experience growing up was that every track in the world, like the, the goal, the North star they were chasing was an NHRA national event. And mm -hmm. if they could get one of those on their schedule, everything else it becomes easier, easier or altogether unnecessary. Like it's had that much value, that much impact. Um, but obviously that changed, right? I mean, it it's still a significant thing because I think you're doing like the Lord's work acknowledging how special it is for a track to have an NHRA national event. And I think it's important that we all recognize the place that the NHRA uh, resides in our sport at the tippy top. Um, but at the same time, it's not to say that there's not room for improvement. It's not time to explore yes. and experiment with new things. And I mean, I'm happy to see them doing the going back to Virginia. Uh, I'm happy to see him doing the, the, the three qualifying shot deal on Saturday. Like, I, I love to see him trying some things, even if they don't work out. But to your point, I remember when I went to the NHRA national event, when you guys first had it back a couple of years ago at BMP, mm -hmm. and it was like the everything was packed. Every hotel yes. was packed. Restaurants were busy. That camp, campground right beside the track was overflowing Jam with people. Packed. Traffic everywhere. And it was you sense that like, oh, my gosh, this the Virginia Nationals this is matter happening. to the people around here. And I think that those are the things that make events special. If you can, like hearing you say that they they closed the school on the Friday of the race, it's like cold, that is a victory. Like that's a feather in your yep. cap forever that you put on an event that had the local school shutting down. You know what I mean? Those and kids are going to be like, hey. Uh, ignore all that stuff about the schedule. We still need to get out of school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's if coming. I was in eighth grade, I'd be pissed. Like, <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Like that's the day I could have spent at home. Are you this serious? Is you like to sign up for yeah. track, you know? I'm, not even, yes. I mean, I'm like, I'm thinking of the kids that ain't even going to the races. Just all the ones that want to play video games, bro. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, we, we everybody has to have a day, man. Come on. Yeah, they deserve it, right? We work these hard, these kids hard. No, yeah. but uh, no. It, it is We're interesting. Excited. Did you like? So does a situation like this, and if you're willing to talk about it, is this like an experimental one-year deal, or you guys feel committed to the future? Because you made some good points. Like, yeah. I can't imagine how much easier it is to sell year-long sponsorships at VMP, oh. no, having an NHRA event on the schedule versus not. Like, it, it automatically a game inflates the value. Not inflates, but in, in, it, uh, increases the value across the board like your sweets are more valuable your season you know all, all those things are more valuable uh because of it so but did you have to like are you looking forward to like years two three four and five is, or do you foresee this being kind of a date that you guys really latch on to with the nhra moving forward oh uh, we hope so I, I will say that um i know this is just a one-year deal for right now but we all both sides have plans to continue um we wanted to go into to things to where it's hey look we're all going to do something different. We're all learning things here. We may have to change things around in a contract and we don't want either side to feel like, oh man, we're latched into a contract that's not yeah. good for, for either side. You know, everybody has to win in these deals to make them continue going forward. And that was our biggest fear coming off of some of the ones that we'd had in the past was like, man, like why don't, we're committed and you're committed, but it, let's make sure we make everybody's life happy and, and make everything work on the business side because we're not a one and done group i'm not tommy's not gavin's not clearly you know you know we're, we really want to see this be a deal where it's 10 years down the road we're still talking about hey man you remember 10 years ago we did that that deal sports park crew that was a monster cleanup and they just executed that to perfection great job by both teams working in unison out there to get the starting line back where it needs to be and we're back to qualifying our MagnaFuel Top Sportsman cars. Glenn Butcher comes up left side of the racetrack out of Dolestown, Ohio. The Butcher and Sons demolition. 
69 Camaro. Who's your tires? A Bruzy Trans and Albert Race Engines on board that machine. He's your number three qualifier to 377.8 in the Lumina that we love so much. Here on the right hand side, Ron Biondo, Kuzman Motorsports, TIFF Transmissions. Number 61 qualifier had an issue yesterday, only won a 920. Yeah, so Glenn, excuse me, Glenn Butcher came out in an opening round of qualifying and laid down that 77 elapsed time. And uh, I'd say that was very impressive for that entire team to uh, rocket right up to number three. Now, they are obviously looking to repeat that, looking for consistency. Ron Biondo is just trying to get his car to go A to B because in testing and the opening round of qualifying, the car made a violent move in the first 60 feet of the run and went right towards the, the uh, tree out there. So let's see if Ron Biondo has this machine fixed here on the NAF Auto Parts side. Butcher's in, Biondo set. There goes Ron Biondo to a 4.32 elapsed time. He can work with that. And Glenn Butcher is just coasting silently to a 9.53 elapsed time at only 34 miles an hour. He's actually going to pull over at the uh, past the 660 foot mark down there. We'll have our safety team track to give Glenn a push to the other end. They go from a great run in Q1 to a less than stellar run in Q2, unfortunately. Different ends of the spectrum, per se, for both teams. Green lights from the safety quad. Means we're good to go. Next two should fire up here momentarily. Dwayne Gallagher, left side of the racetrack out of Cedarville, Ohio. The Deer Run Investments 1968 Camaro with the Charlie Buck horsepower. 728 cubic inches underneath the hood scoop. Struggled the first attempt. Randy Perkinson, his brand new G467 Mustang for Perkinson Racing in Oakwood Monument. Here on the right hand side. Randy made a soft pass, one of 411. Yeah, you look down there on the starting line of the Perkinson camp, and of course, uh, Jeff Pierce watching on. The G4 crew is out there as well, but this is a, uh, a car that could definitely be in the running for best engineer. Uh, best appearing, just 
beautiful piece just, inside now. Just give now. them all the trophies because yeah. it's worthy of it. And they and it, it's been a long time coming to get this car out and out uh, running. So uh, hats off to everybody that kind of put their finishing touches on it. And Randy Perkinson will pull to the starting line, right hand side. 4-11 yesterday in a shutoff run. By far a three-second player that you see right here. Blue Oval and Chevrolet bow tie. Look at Perkinson's machine, 383 with a nine for Oakwood Monuments, 192 miles an hour. Randy Perkinson to the top of the racetrack. 426. Wayne Gallagher and 160 miles an hour. Makes his best run there in the number 33 spot. Randy Perkinson climbs the ladder up to number eight now. Top half the field there for his Ford. Number 10 qualifier and last year's winner at this event comes up next on the left hand side of the racetrack. That's Zach Hauser out of Lincoln to North Carolina, the 2000 Firebird. He won a 384 with a nine. And Mike Alexander Jr. here on the right hand side, the Grinch Corvette out of Mechanicsville, Virginia. He won a 429 four that landed him in the number 36 qualified position. Right, to the green machine out of Mike Alexander. As the pre stage ball blitz, and Zachary Hauser just about set to go. This pair is in. Hauser's out of the gas early, and Alexander 407, right hand side, 175 miles an hour. Best for the weekend for the Mechanicsville, Virginia split window. In the pit area, needs Schweitzer Dynamics Pro Nitrous Cars. Schweitzer Dynamics Pro Nitrous Cars, we need you for Q1, please. Schweitzer Dynamics Pro Nitrous Cars, we need you to the staging lanes at this time for Q1. Let me set the scene here on the starting line. This is Old Dominion Speedway on a Friday night. About, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Glenn Teets here on the right-hand side. Adam Manassas, Virginia, the Teach Racing GTO for Weaver's Automotive, Buck Racing, and CNC Performance. Freeze Garage on board that machine as well. And Kevin Fortney in the Monte Carlo on the left hand side of the racetrack. out of the gate. There goes the Monte Carlo. 4408. What a run. 179 miles an hour to 489. 107 out of Glenn Teets's GTO. And uh, that is going to put Kevin Fortney into the number 20 spot. Next up, Stacy Hall and Robbie Crenshaw. Crenshaw here on the right-hand side of the racetrack out of Richmond, Virginia, the Abilene Express 89 Cutlass for buildrwc.com. Number 32 qualifier to 426 with a five. And Stacy Hall on the left-hand side, past world champion in that Fulton-powered 63 split window Corvette, Maxima Racing Oils and TM race cars on board that machine. He did not get down in the opening round to qualify.
goes towards the center of the racetrack, brings it back, and for 27, the end result for that Fulton Competition Engine Square event at 165 miles an hour. Robbie Crenshaw going to go 424 here, 166. That's going to be the best run of the weekend in the number 30 spot. Your next pair. Coming up now. Buddy McGowan here on the right-hand side at a Perry Hall Merrill in the 68 Camaro for BNB Racing. Your number 49 qualifier to 463A in the TNT Express. Chad Tilly on the left-hand side at a Winston-Salem, North Carolina. MJ Printing, Euchre Automotive, and Sunrise Tire on board his machine. Chad Tilly, Buddy McGowan, 15 thou red for the Camaro of Buddy. He's going to go 463 here. Exactly what he went in the opening round of qualifying. And 455 for Chad at a 154 miles an hour. Here comes the Ferg. Going to be up next. Yeah, Dan Ferguson here on the right-hand side out of Harrisburg, North Carolina. The Dean Young Motorsports 68 Camaro. Rear Morrison Power Plant, Schweitzer Dynamics, Rossler Trans, Rail Battery on board that machine. And Ed Foley out of Westminster, Pennsylvania, the Cox's Automotive 05 Cobalt. All right, so issues there for Foley. It looks like Dan Ferguson going to be on a single pass here. So we'll find out if Ferguson can improve off his earlier 475 elapsed time. Looking good at half track, and Ferguson to the other end. How about a 386 number? 193 the speed for Dan Ferguson. He was 13 going by the tree, and that is going to put the Dean Young Motorsports team into, let's see, number 12, unofficially right now. Aaron Glasser completes his burnout here on the right-hand side of the racetrack. The two-face Camaro out of Shepherdsville, Kentucky. Aaron sits number 13 in the qualified order at a 388-2. All three second field on the elite side here in Magnafuel Top Sportsman.
Yeah, Aaron Glaster's car, aggressive early on, was 989 down low and starts to a lot of wheel speed, clicks it off 533. Just a little touch up of the starting line that we're gonna see and work our way through the remaining field of top enforcement competitors. Very large class, to say the least. We'd like to give a special thanks to Casper.
All right, so Dave Whedon, Cheyenne Stanley. Classic muscle car matchup. Ford right side, Chevy left side. Pre-stage and stage bulbs are finally lit up, and here comes the tree. Wind goes towards the wall, and problems continue for Cheyenne Stanley. Yep, something came off of uh, the Parker paving entry. They're in the right lane, so. Cowling, run up there, take a look at that real quick. Two more are completing their burnouts. Derek Barnes comes up next here on the right-hand side of the racetrack out of Drayton, Maryland. The Barnes excavating 99 S10. He's number 46 at a 442. And uh, Ronnie Proctor, left side of the racetrack. The Blue Bayou 2009 Mustang. For Sonics Gears, Larice Motorsports Insurance, Hoosier Tire, Roadrunner Racing Fuels. He's number 30 at a 424 with a three. Ronnie Proctor, sport a new paint scheme here at 2024. Good, clean run for Ronnie. He's gonna go 417 here. They're gonna pick up a bunch, 170 miles an hour. Derek Barnes, 437 improvement also out of the guest 10 over there on the right-hand side. So Ronnie Proctor will go to number 24. Derek Barnes sets number 46 here in Q2. Jeff Pittman comes up next, left side of the racetrack, the beautiful Chevelle out of Conover, North Carolina for Hickory and Closed Trailer Sales. Charlie Buck horsepower underneath the hood scoop. And Mark Payne here on the right-hand side out of Waynesboro, Virginia, in the House of Payne 06 Cavalier. Holly, EFI, Mickey Thompson Tire, JAC Tuning, FDI, Rogers Automotive, MSD, and Competition Suspension on board this LS Twin Turboed Machine. of uh, drama down there. Mark was tapping on the roof, telling his crew members to come check something out. Looks like they got it taken care of, whatever it might have been. He'll start to make his way towards the top bulb. Mark Payne's car is aggressive off the starting line. Turns to the left a little bit, and Mark's like, yeah, we'll come back for Q3 later. Jeff Pittman, 403, takes the Chevelle down to the top in 180 miles an hour. That's going to put Pittman number 19. Two elite machines lining up here in Q2. Jeremy Creaseman on the right hand side. The Skittles, 2012 Camaro. 380 with the six, landed Jeremy in the fifth qualified position. Jamie Fowler, the pimpin' and limpin' machine, left side of the racetrack for PD Fleet, LAT Racing Walls, NGK Advanced Prosthetics, Gopher Utilities, Junior's RV Repair, and Yonts RVs. Creaseman utilizing par power. Underneath the hood of this Skittles Camaro and Fulton Power playing for Jamie Fowler. So nearing the end of Top Sportsman. Go and do just a very short track prep and it'll be time for Q1 in Pro Nitrous. Professional categories getting ready to take the racetrack for the first time today. 
right now, Jamie Fowler, Jeremy Creaseman. On the starting line here at Magna Fuel Top Sportsman, presented by Corbin's RV. Tire shake for Jamie Fowler, and he's out of the gas early, and Jeremy have a, has a perfect reaction time. 383, no improvement for him at 192 miles an hour. 474 for the ED fleet. Fowler. It's going to be Jacob Elrod. From Bluffton, Ohio, comes that silver 1963 Corvette. It's in a... Uh, of a wild ride yesterday for Elrod. Check the uh, right, the Willy bars. Final adjustments of those being made right now. Jacob drops in low and pulls to the starting line. Final car in the category. Single run. Tire shake right at the uh, starting line for Elrod, and he will just motor on down to the finish line stripe at 919. So that will conclude Q2 and Top Sportsman. Bring out a little bit of equipment out there on the racing surface. Track preps underway and we are a few moments going into Schweitzer Dynamics Pro Nitrous Qualifying. The world's quickest pro mods to the wildest radial cars out there. If you want We drive tech. We drive the industry. Going beyond the limits and advancing forward. A versatile all-in-one solution. We're here for you every step of the way. And that's why you see Fuel Tech everywhere. Regulators, filters, fueling champions.
good teams that I think are going to be competitive. Maybe not right off the, the bat here in race number one, but by midseason, you might see them in the winner's circle. Well, yeah, and you've also got the Wiley veterans still, you know, in the category, so they're not ready to give, <laughs> give up the helm quite yet. But it's always exciting to see new guys coming into the category to give these uh, seasoned veterans a run for their money. Derek Ford, the first out on the right-hand side at a Sykesville, Maryland, the Euro Pros Collision Center, 1968 Camaro. Fulton Power Plant underneath that hood scoop, late model performance, competitive wiring, and Mincer Motorsports on board this machine. Obviously, cool weather is upon us here today. The sun is out. But you look up there at the flag, and it is a very strong crosswind. So it could be challenging in some ways. The drivers, as they maneuver the 660-foot race course, you get past the grandstands and feel that wind hit you a little bit. And then on the uh, left to right side, it is pushing hard to the right now. We'll see what Derek Ford is going to bring to the table. The Euro Pros Collision Center. Chevy Camaro, first out on a single run as we kick things off in Schweitzer Dynamics Pro Nitrous Qualifying. Ford's crew member was telling him to stop, and he rolls right into the pre-stage beam. He's like, hey, I'm kind of jacked up for this. Let's go. Just a few more inches, and you'll see that stage ball to light up. Not a bad run. And the finish line stripe. It's 371.5, 201 miles an hour for Derek Ford. A to B here in Q1 for him. They've got something to definitely go back and work Absolutely, off of. Absolutely, man. That's a great first pass. Nice, clean uh, clean pass. You can see just a little chatter mark down here, down low. You see the paddle of the tires. And once that car got past 60 foot, it was moving. Some white smoke out of the right side header bank as he was approaching the top end. So next up, we're going to have Dale Brinsfield on the left-hand side at Oak Ridge, North Carolina, the sometime racing 2016 Camaro, the Jack Caddy Camp. Oak Ridge transfer on board that machine as well. And one of our graduates from Elite Top Sportsman, move it over here to Schweitzer Dynamics Pro Nitrous, Buddy Perkinson here on the right-hand side. Out of North Prince George, Virginia, the Perkinson Construction, LAT Racing Oils, Musi Powered 69 Camaro. And this, I think, is one of the cooler things to see in the, in the sport is when guys graduate up to the next class. Well, I mean, Buddy Perkinson always has competed at, you know, the highest levels and you know, is 32 years old now. And you think back years, years ago, um, as a young kid, he's driving, you know, pro stock cars. And, uh, and they got away from that and went, went back to top sportsman racing, pro modified style machines. And it's been just a matter of time when they wanted to make that move. And you know, Buddy has won championships, numerous races, that sort of thing. So now they're on to their next thing, per se, of their career. And they're going after a world championship in, you know, Schweitzer Dynamics Pro Nitrous. Same exact car we seen last year. 959 combination out of Perkinson Construction. Be on the right side, Buddy P and Dale Brinsfield. If you are back home watching live on Flow Racing, some great new camera shots that we brought in in 2024. Look at Perkinson. Finish line, stripe 372. Buddy Perkinson at 200 miles an hour, 381, 9, 192. Brinsfield's car was right alongside and started fading away at eh, about 500 to 600 feet out there. But the Oak Ridge transfer, uh, transfer Camaro, excuse me. It's all the way down to the top of the racetrack. And you know, these, these might not be the home run. ETs that, that we see from time to time, but they're going A to B. Yeah, and, and we right watch this countless times. Guys that can go A to B can go rounds on race day. Well, and obviously, Buddy's one of the best levers in the category, too. And that is going to be something that 
All these other drivers are going to have to factor in going to the eliminations. They might come out and not run the fastest right off the bat, but if you're a slouch on the starting line, you're getting left behind. That you're opens the get, door wide open. <laughs> you're going to get chewed up. Yeah. So next up, we have Andrew Honders on the left-hand side, the New York-based Triple Trouble 69 Camaro, Scotty's Racing Engines, MTK Racecraft, Schweitzer Dynamics, and Tie Drive on board this thing. 959 cubic inches underneath the hood scoop for Andrew. Right now, Andrew Hondras. The crew will walk out in front of the black Camaro, bring him into the pre-stage beam. Got to run quicker than 71.5 right now. Derek Ford's pass is the top spot. Obviously very early on into Q1 here in the category. See the heavy hitters out here shortly. Another good run out of Andrew Hondras. How about that? 372 with a two, 201 the speed for the Dix Hills, New York entry. So that is going to be good enough for number two by one foul. He slides in there, bumps Buddy down to number three. And you go back, and, you, and we talked about it briefly, but we brought in a, uh, a drone footage. We brought in the, the boom camera. And that just, on the live feed, if you, if you are watching back home or wherever you are right now on Flow Racing, totally different perspective. Yeah, much cooler camera angles this year from Flow Racing. Big shout out to those folks at Flow and the Franklins for bringing on these new cameras and stuff like that. Man, this is really cool. Incorporating driver's names, a lot yeah. of times, you know, those kind of things. It's, you know, coming a long way uh, from from the beginning of, of Flow production. So hats off to their team. I know uh, they have all worked so hard to get where it is today. And uh, huge changes we have already seen first race of the 2024 season right now. Dane Wood lines up on the left-hand side of the racetrack at a Chesapeake, Virginia, the Purvis Ford 2012 Mustang. Affordable transmissions, Three Guns Customs, BHM Drag Racing, Julian Donnie Wilson, and Billy Albert providing the horsepower underneath the hood scoop. 974 cubic inches for Dane Wood. Crews making their final adjustments. Dane purging the nitrous system, getting the bottle pressure where he wants it. He'll start heading towards the top bulb here momentarily. You know, Dane Wood is another one of those drivers that is quite the lever in the category. Dane has won quite a few rounds on whole shots before, but man, that car is looking good. He sets the front end down just before half track and clicks it off 451 at 118 miles an hour. He's 986 down low. Dane Wood, first out of the category that we see not go A to B. And I think simply that was because the car was riding hard on the Willie Bart and wasn't able to, to do any driving. He had yeah. no steering wheel to uh, do anything with, and, and these these weather conditions are pretty unique for this this event. I mean, oh, absolutely, it is. Still early on in the year, and uh, you know the weather conditions here are going to be unlike any other track that we visit later on in the season. So next up here on the right hand side, Cam Clark out of Reedsville, North Carolina, the Cumberland Farm and Auto 69 Camaro, owned by Mark Engel, Premier Concrete Solutions, DNT Motorsports, powered by 959 cubic inch Pat Musi Mill. And on the left side, Freddie Scriba out of Millersville, Maryland. The Scriba welding entry, 69 Camaro. Freddie tunes his own machine. Got a Musi 974 cubic inch monster between the frame rails. This is a brand new build out of Robert Hayes Motorsports. 
Freddie would like to thank Pat Musi, Robert Hayes, Todd Tuttero, and his crew members who give up their time to come out here and help out on that machine as he goes through his race weekend. So obviously, uh, new cars you're talking about for Freddie. The old car still running here with us in the PDRA. Jamie Thompson's doing the driving duties of that now at 632. And Freddie trying to get a handle on this new machine. And he has been a front runner before. Scribe a welding over there on the left hand side. The Cumberland Farms and Auto Camaro of Cam Clark into the beams right lane. They're set. Here we go. Clark goes nowhere, scribing to the top of the racetrack, and 3.703, 204 miles an hour for Freddie Scriba. And that is going to be a number one qualifying effort for right now. Slides into the top spot by 15 thousandths of a second. Well, Derek, Scriba's got to be pretty happy with that pass right there. Very clean-looking run as we watch the replay on a flow. And every time that race car goes down the racetrack, they gain more data on that brand-new build. So our next pair is fired up. Completing the burnout process, Brian Schrader. Here on the right-hand side of the racetrack, the Pandemonium 2017 Corvette out of Robert Hayes Motorsports. Robert Hayes prepares this machine with the Pat Musi horsepower, 976 cubic inches. And a veteran in the category left side, Chris Rini. The Charlie Buck horsepower ATI performance product Chevrolet Camaro. Copy and print warehouse.com on board his machine, that pickle built hot rod. Yeah, when you talk about Chris Rini, I think that's a guy that is long overdue for some success. And uh, he's cut his teeth in pro modified racing for many years. Think back to the NMCA days and different kind of combinations of race cars that Chris has driven. Debuted this car a few seasons ago. Tire shake early on for Rini. He's going to click it off, and Brian Schrader goes to the top end at 377, 198. It's 19 green. Not a bad run for Schrader. That's going to put a number five. Rini's run puts it off 496. He's going to go to number eight. Two more will come to life and come through the burnout box here at Galat Motor Sports Park. Get ready to turn the tire over. Mincer Motorsports Pro Street, presented by AFCO Racing. We need you for Q1, please. Mincer Motorsports Pro Street, we need you to the staging lanes for your first round of qualifying. Billy Albert next up on the right-hand side of the racetrack out of Withville, Virginia, the El Chapo 1969 Camaro. For structural mechanical Eisenbach Chevrolet of course he builds his own motors 974 cubic inches of Albert power underneath the hood scoop and Marcus Butner out of tobacco there in North Carolina the heartbreaker 69 Camaro for Butner construction Twin City rebar Jay Cox racing and Liberty's gears Pat Musi providing the horsepower for that machine 973 cubic inches for Butner yeah, obviously a new marketing partner on board for Billy Albert here this season. Withville, Virginia dealerships for the Eisenbach family. Mm -hmm. 
so I'm sure Ricky Smith is probably watching the live feed. As he has been helping tune the race car. You see on the starting line, the right hand side, Ricky jumped on the plane and flew west. Marcus Butner, Pat Musi Power, left hand side. To go to number one, you gotta go quicker than 370 with a three. Butner's waiting, got his pre-stage ball lit up. Albert moving forward. And the staging process is underway. Butner's car was hiking the front end into the air and he clicks it off. Billy Albert, 369.4. Say hello to your new number one qualifier, ladies and gentlemen, right now at 203.83 miles an hour. Butner, 415, 135. He stayed right alongside of Billy Albert, but that car, front end just kind of like Dane Woods. In the left lane, both of them hiked up in the air and it was pushing towards the center line. So when Butner decided to click it off and coast on through, slides to number eight. So we've talked about these cars. Kind of going quicker and faster and seeing a new number one qualifier. And it could very well happen right here. Two yeah. guys that just have been battling it out each and every year for world championships. Two of the absolute best in the business. Back up from their burnouts right here. Jim Halsey on the right-hand side of the racetrack out of Havana the Grace, Maryland. The Cecil County Dragway 68 Camaro with Schweitzer Dynamics, Yellow Bullet, and Purnell Body Shop. On board his machine, 959 cubic inches of Fulton horsepower underneath the hood scoop. It's a brand new car for Halsey this season. And Tommy Franklin, your reigning world champion, lines up on the left-hand side of the racetrack. Out of Fredericksburg, Virginia, the Jungle Rat 69 Camaro for Franklin Electric, Smartcom Home Technologies, Redline Oil. Pat Musi providing the horsepower on that side. And I tell you, you look at the car numbers, it says it all. Jim Halsey every time he came to the starting line, we're so used to seeing the number one on the window. And you talking about two guys that had a hard fought battle in a championship last year. Upsets, all kinds of different things that happened and transpired throughout 2023. From the dust settled, Tommy Franklin prevailed and number one goes back on the side of the jungle rack. They meet for the first time this season right here. In PDRA competition, tire shake for both. Halsey's going to drive through it slightly more than what Tommy Franklin did. Four flat, 162. Tommy at 495. Both cars definitely loaded up there. So that's going to put Jim Halsey and his team to number eight. Tommy Franklin in the number 11. But Billy Albert will end out round number one of qualifying. Number one at three is 69-4. And now we're going to make the jump, Derek, to WS Construction Pro Boost, maybe, as they check the racing surface. We're going to look at that first, evidently. So we're ready. We're going to go to 
WS Construction Pro Boost presented by Time Drive and P2 Contracting. And the first machine out onto the racetrack is going to be Steve King out of Strasburg, Virginia. The Savage 2022 Corvette. Jeff Miller Performance, Resolution Racing Services, G Force, MSR Performance, and Pilot Electric on board this machine. Steve King has committed to running the full tour here on the PDRA season. And he's going to hurt some feelings, I believe. I talked to this team yesterday in the pit area. They're extremely happy with the piece that they brought here to Galat Motorsports Park. And testing went very well for him. Gene Pilot owns the machine here right side. Noonan Hemi in between the frame rails. Jeff Miller, John Salemi doing the tuning on this hot rod. And keep your eyes. This thing is a bullet. And John Salemi uh, turning the wrenches, getting a chance to make this thing run. Very capable of laying down some big numbers. So kick it off, Pro Boost. Tire shake and sets the front end down. King will coast on to the top of the racetrack at 5.07. Car got off the starting line and didn't start paddling the tires until right about the tree. And uh, Steve King caught it rather quickly. Boarded the run. Be back for Q2. Bubba Green. Next out on the left-hand side of the racetrack at a Greer, South Carolina, the 29 Corvettes. And that thing's tuned by Scotty Cannon. Yes, that's Scotty Cannon, the icon in the world of Pro Modified Racing. I believe that's him in the hat, standing back behind, trying to get the car lined back up where they want it. And what a matchup this is, because Todd Tuttero back in action this season here in the Peter A. And the Justin Smith-owned King Tut 69 Camaro out of Yakinville, North Carolina. Quick fuel, tie drive, YO Motorsports, Extreme Oil, and NGK Spark Plugs on board this machine. You know. Todd Tuttero, one of the, if not best, in pro modified racing. And a guy that really has, has done it all over the years. Everything from, you know, big dog to world championships and, and in between. But you can't keep him out of the driver's seat for long. Todd focused on tuning last year. And uh, he is back at it in 2024 driving and tuning for Team Quick Fuel. And tie drive, it's good looking first gen red Camaro. will pull up alongside of Bubba Green, who they have worked with that program for over a season now to really get a handle on it. And I think this year you can see Bubba, Bubba Green running some big numbers. Well, he definitely has the knowledge base behind him as these two start to light the top bulbs and here we go. Bubba Green, 366, and Todd Tuttero, 362 for 210 the speed to kick things off. With a little side-by-side -side action, you've seen some kind of part to, uh, sliding down the racetrack from Bubba Green's Corvette. But Todd Tuttero, good run for him here in the opening round of qualifying. Kenny Lang next up here on the right-hand side of the racetrack, the Al Billis Racing 69 Camaro for NGK Spark Plugs, VP Race Fuels, and Miller Welders. And Joel Winsley out of Brooklyn, Michigan, left side of the racetrack, the Liberty's Gears 2017 Camaro for Mincer Motorsports, VP Racing, and PTP.
with Kenny Lang and testing yesterday. Pop the burst bait on the Al Billis Racing Camaro. So they went back and did a little work to that thing. Joel Winslet coming up here for Team Liberty Gears. Left hand side. So we've seen Tuttarugo 62 for Winsley and Lang into the beams. They're set. Kenny Lang's getting after it right hand side. There's the Nap Auto Parts scoreboard lighting up at 363, 3209 the speed. Winsley's going to follow through at 369 there, 194 miles an hour. So Kenny Lang to number two, Joe Winsley to number four. Here in WS Construction Produce, presented by P2 Contracting and Tie Drive. Chuck Osh, next up, left side of the racetrack at a Mount Airy, Maryland. They're Roche Racing Engine, 68 Camaro for HFR Fabrication, Churchview Farms, Redline Oil, and NGK Spark Plugs. And William Brown the third on the right-hand side, the Blue Magic 2.0, 69 Camaro out of Brown Motorsports. Proline, m and LAT, Hoosier, and Wyo Motorsports on board. Jamie Miller tuning this machine here on the right-hand side. Pro-line Hemi in between the frame rails. Chuck Alsh. Got that gray Camaro left hand side. He is ready to go. Lights are down. Both cars go silent at the same time. 393 for Chuck Alsh down the first federal lane. 154 of the speed. Brown's going to go through it for 12 here. They're going to be five and six in qualifying. Numbers early on. Past the half track mark is and they simultaneously went silent. And here comes Preston Tanner on the left-hand side of the racetrack out of Rensselaer, Indiana, the Sweetheart 2015 Corvette. Tower Manufacturing. A.J. Winton, Sun Strange Engineering, Manhattan Collision Center, G-Force Race Cars, Wyo Motorsports, and Jeff Pierce Race Car Tuning. Next to him, though, a tough customer in Derek Ward out of Friendship, Maryland, the 68 Firebird. For Resolution Racing Services, G-Force Race Cars, and MSR Performance. Derek, your winner at this year's World Series of Pro Mod and came, down, came out yesterday in testing and laid down a world record-setting run. Right now, He'd just like to get it down from A to B. In the pit area, we need Liberty's Gears Extreme Pro Stock cars. Liberty's Gears Extreme Pro Stock, we need you. All right, so Ward and Tanner, this is going to be, I feel like, a good matchup. The kid over there on the left-hand side is really been impressive over the past couple seasons. You can see how he has progressed. And Derek Ward came out swinging and testing yesterday. He 
see Andy Tanner leaning down, looking through the driver's side window of his son's Corvette. And he will be guided into the pre-stage beam. Both crews look at each other and they will back away. 3.62.4, the time to beat right now. Still being held by Todd Tunnero. Who's gonna lower the number? Is it gonna be Preston Tanner or Derek Ward? Tire shake for Derek Ward. Preston Tanner goes towards the left side wall and both cars will coast on down to the other end at 471 and 485. So they do not take over that top spot. Camaro Joe Albright here on the right hand side in the Fletcher Cox Racing 69 Camaro Shady Trail Ranch Cox Racing LAT Racing Oils powered by the Soma Race Engine Showfield Performance and PTP Racing Spencer Hyde left side at Stratford Ontario Canada Jack in the Greenstock 69 Camaro for Redline Oil NGK Spark Plugs Hyde Construction and Newton Race Engineering Derek, we haven't really talked about weather, although it is nice outside. The track's a lot hotter today than it's been throughout any of the testing. More sunlight hitting it. It's been cloud cover prior to today. Right. So Yesterday, you've seen a lot of the cloud cover. Today, that is, well, no such thing. Direct sunlight, which is obviously good as we get into the later part of the day to keep heat in the racetrack a little longer than what we've seen yesterday. And... Uh, we are finishing up qualifying tonight, potentially around 9 o'clock. And at Q3, you'll see Spencer Hyde and Derek Ward go head-to-head. -head. A little match race. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. Both of them past winners of the World Series of Pro Mod. So that's going to be fun to watch. Spencer Hyde's on a run. He's doing some driving out there. And how about a 002 reaction time and 3.623. 3. 211.13 the speed. And by one thousand of a second, Spencer Hyde and the Jack and the Green Stock Chevy will go to the number one qualifying spot right now. Octavio Rose, two, Kenny Lang, three, Bubba Green, four, Joel Winsley's five, Chuck Olsh is sixth, and William Brown the third at seven. Preston Tanner rounds out your top eight at 471.8. A few cars still to go in the category. The lead back there. Here's two heavy hitters <laughs> coming yeah. out right now. We might see a new number one qualifier. Yeah, Randy Weatherford and Melanie Salemi, the first lady of Pro Mod. Weatherford on the left side of the racetrack out of Danville, Virginia. The WS Construction 2020 Camaro for Proline Pro Charger, Fuel Tech, and M&M Transmissions. And Melanie Salemi here on the right-hand side. Purple Rain side piece is what they call the 2023 Camaro. G-Force built machine, Ali installation, Liberty's gears, quick drive, Ross pistons, NGK, MSR, and Resolution Racing Services. Melanie, the current record holder in the category. Randy Weatherford with the ProLine Pro Charger setup. Screw blower here for Melanie Salemi. So Salemi's car is very, very aggressive down low. 
The 60 foot numbers for the Ali Insulation Camaro. Probably the quickest in the category. They like to get that car out and moving very early on into the run. Randy Weatherford, no slouch whatsoever. The blue WS Construction Camaro is into the beam's left side. Melanie said right side, here we go. So Levy maneuvers the racetrack to a 3.61.5 elapsed time, 209 the speed. As Randy coasts on through at 5.06, he encountered some issues. And there is a new number one qualifier for all the ladies out there. Melanie Salimi to the top of the order. By eight thousandths of a second, bumps Spencer High to two, top Tetero to number three. Oh man, you gotta love this new car. Yeah, Kurt Stetting here on the right hand side in a new mount this season out of Carnegie, Pennsylvania, the P2 contracting P2 Racing 69 model Camaro. Wyo Motorsports, Ty Drive, NGK Spark Plugs, and Robert Abbott Oranges up against Scott Lang, who busted on the scene last season. The Equalizer 2018 Camaro out of Charlotte, North Carolina, KA13. NFL player Keenan Allen. Helping out that program, AML Motorsports, ProLine, ProCharger, FuelTech, Carmack, and m and Scott Lang, back-to-back -back wins, and that is hard to do on the PDRA Tour. He did it last season. I was really impressed with Scott Lang's driving there, uh, I would say, the middle to second half of 2023. It kind of seems like everything that they had worked for previously came together and the stars aligned and they uh, definitely had a hot streak. So let's see if they're going to continue that momentum right into 2024. But talking about a beautiful race car a moment ago, that's Kurt Settings. Brand new P2 contracting hot rod you see on the right hand side. Not a color combination that you normally see, and that's what makes it unique. I like it. Steading, final move into the stage beam. Lights are down. They're out in the way. Kurt, Kurt Steading has to grab a handful of wheel. The car sashaying around at 364.5, 208 the speed to the 366, 213 charge out of Scott Lang. So that's going to put Steading to number five. Scott Lang goes to number seven right now but that is top speed out of the category so far and it belongs to scott lang doesn't have low et but he's got top speed that's for sure can anyone say world champ you see him coming up next yeah that's jason harris on the left hand side of the racetrack, the Pittsburgh, North Carolina based party time 69 Camaro. Southern Diamond Company, SP Tools, Hoosier Tire, Pro Charger, Pro Line, Braille Battery, on board his machine. And the Carolina Kid here on the right hand side, Travis Harvey, the 2017 Camaro for Miles Truck Services, Pro Line Racing, Fuel Tech, CK Motorsports, and Holland Enterprises. Two guys that go head to head often throughout the Carolinas have raced against each other for years. Jason Harris, your reigning world champion here in Pro Boost from last season. Yeah. Travis Harvey, he'd like to have that title at the end and of the year. And Travis was fighting hard for a championship too. He was on Jason's heels and it came down to uh, really the last race in the world finals. But this is a uh, this is a matchup that we have seen so many times before at Big Dog, there at Piedmont. These two have really grew up over the years running head to head countless number of times. Harvey, right side, out of the gate, turns it loose, he's out of power, and there goes Jason. 3.615, 207 the speed, and the party time Chevrolet Camaro for Southern Diamond Company is gonna go to number two there off of speed. Melanie Salimi will stay number one, her 209.92, Beat out Jason's 207.66. So Melanie Salimi, your number one qualifier here after Q1 in Pro Boost.
So a couple years back, Tyler Crossno came up with this idea for a new category and he named it Pro Street. And we all wondered if it would work or not. It's absolutely one of my favorite categories in the PDRA now and our first car out to take time this weekend is a beautiful one. Yeah, this might be one of my favorite cars in the class. Dan Norris, what a absolutely gorgeous 2022 Mustang. He's got Mincer Motorsports, Noonan Race Engineering, Fuel Tech, M&M, PSI, SSI, all on board this machine at a Brighton, Michigan. And like you said, Derek, they don't come much more pretty than this one sitting yeah. on the right lane. There's just a lot of attention to detail I can, you know, even tell from the tower here. So for everyone back at Panty's Performance, Dan Norris sitting down here in Q1 and making a single run. The car started to make a move to the left and he caught it immediately. And uh, just kind of the motors on down to the way 876. Yeah, one thing very different about our Pro Street category is the size of the tire. Only a 10.5 allowed in this category. But most of these drivers make these things work and lay down some impressive numbers. Our next two fire up. It's going to be Richard Reagan here on the right hand side at Rutledge, Tennessee, the 1990 Ford Mustang. And Ethan Stedding, the College Fund 2024 Camaro out of Carnegie, Pennsylvania for P2 Racing. Ethan, straight from Pro Juniors to Pro Street. And he was testing this machine here. And laid down some impressive numbers on that time drive equipped Chevrolet Camaro. Reagan into the top, Bob. Here comes Ethan. Side by side they go to the top end. Look at Ethan Stedding, 398.6. I know that team's fired up over there. What a great run. From Pro Juniors to Pro Street, 398.6. Richard Reagan, no slouch at all, 4037 at 191. Yeah, and Ethan Stedding definitely did his homework. Had his chutes pulled when he's supposed to. Had everything together on that lap. 398.6. In the pit area, we need drag 965 Pro Nitrous Motorcycle. Pro Nitrous Motorcycle. A Pro Extreme Motorcycle. I'll get that right before the year's out. We've got turbos in there now, not just nitrous. Pro Extreme Motorcycle. Drag 965 Pro Extreme Motorcycle. We need you. Bill Devine comes up next on the right-hand side at Muskegon, Michigan. The Bullseye Power 2001 Mustang for Fuel Tech, Mickey Thompson, Firecore, Maxima, Liberty's Gears, VP Fuels, and Strange Engineering.
Bill Devine has a couple issues there. 501 at 117. Comes up next on the left-hand side of the racetrack out of Chesterfield, Virginia, the Game Changer 2000 Firebird for Green Brothers Racing. Quick fuel to summer race engines, Pro Charger, Atomizer, Neil Chance Converters. Ty Casper backs up his Ford Mustang here on the right-hand side out of Westville, New Jersey. The Victus Baseball Bats Vibrant Precision Turbo m, &M Transmissions Machine. Well, I tell you, as, as you uh, talked about Ron Green, the all right, that's called the game changer. He did some preseason testing, and if that is any indication of what he's bringing to the table here in race number one, he's going to live up to the name of the car. It's for sure going to uh, be a game changer in the category of Vincer Motorsports Pro Street, presented by AFCO Racing. Green is in. The Victus baseball bat. Mustang is ready to go. Ty Casper. Look at Ron Green getting after it. First federal side. Look at the numbers on the scoreboard. 389 4, 200 miles an hour for the Chesterfield, Virginia Pontiac. And there is your new number one qualifier by nearly a tenth of a second. Ron Green, 389 4, 200 the speed. Man, that, run. that one gave me chills, buddy. That thing went straight as an arrow, and what an E.T. Ron, Ron Green came to play this weekend. Ty Casper went and lift, lifted early there at 478 at all, 122 miles an hour. So uh, as it looks in qualifying right now, Ron Green, Ethan Stedding, Richard Regan, Ty Casper, Bill Devine, Dan Norris. Jerry Morgano up next on the left-hand side out of Apollo Beach, Florida, the Copperhead 02 Mustang from Ameriprise Financial to Summer Race Engines, Bullseye Turbo, Mincer Motorsports Atomizer, Visner Engine Development. Joel Winsley, Jr. on the right-hand side of the racetrack out of Dearborn, Michigan, mechanical heating and cooling machine for Pro Charger and Liberty's Gears. Winsley made some impressive runs in testing. So we'll see what he can do right here. Winsley's going to pedal it, trying to get it to the other end at 5.08. Jerry Morgano had some issues as well, 4.72 at only 117 for the Copperhead Mustangs. Morgano slides to number four. Winsley will be in the number seven spot right now. And here comes one of the quicker cars in the category. Side by side, Ford and Chevy. We'll match up here. Tim Essick here on the right-hand side out of Port Tobacco, Maryland. The Brown Sugar 2018 Mustang for Pro Charger and Essick Motorsports. 
And Nick Agostino on the left-hand side, the Cannoli Express 69 Camaro. Nash Competition Engines, Maxima Racing Oils, NLR Systems, Precision Turbo, M&M Transmission, and Mincer Motorsports on board his machine. Drag 965 Pro Extreme Motorcycle. Drag 965 Pro Extreme Motorcycles, we need you. Motorcycles, we need you. So Ford versus Chevrolet. Brown Sugar here on the right-hand side with the Pro Charger. Turbos for Agostino on the left-hand side. Twin turbo small block for Agostino. Essex leads before the tree activates. And Nick Agostino is going to go out and exper experience some tire shake and clicks it off. So the Canadian will go 532 there on the left side. Essex, like we talked about, not going to get a lapse time. He has uh, anticipated the tree and it cost him dearly. So Derek, you know, we talked about it just a touch, but these, these hot temperatures are even more critical for these small tire cars. So a, a lot of, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll see these guys go a little quicker and have a little better luck with the racetrack here in the next couple rounds of qualifying. Yeah, and I think it's, especially tonight is going to be the, uh, the time to watch. Absolutely. Scott Kincaid, left side of the racetrack out of Thornhill, Tennessee. The Clinch Mountain Transport 69 Camaro. And Bill Riddle, reigning world champion here on the right-hand side out of Howell, Michigan, the Corrigan Race Fuels 89 Camaro. B&L Services, Mickey Thompson Tires, Motorsports Unlimited, SSI Superchargers, Redline Oil, on board this Bickle Built machine on the right side. Yeah, and what both of these drivers did last season was remarkable in different aspects. Yes. Obviously, Riddle being a world champion, seeing the success that he had, but Scott Kincaid's record last year, um, you know, round wins, event wins, and that guy was charging after a championship, came up short. So, you know, if Kincaid can, you know, repeat what he did in 2023, it's going to be very interesting to see who the world champion in this class is going to be at the end of the year. Oh, absolutely. Very tough competition, but two of the biggest hitters here in the cat category will line up right now. How about Bill Riddle, 398, 190, the speed. You can hear the car lay over there at the other end of the racetrack, 494 for Ken Cade. Um, and Bill Riddle going to go to number two with that run. Kincaid in number seven. And we are going to move into our extreme pro stock category. Let's go qualifying real quick. Ron Green, Bill Riddle, Ethan Studding. First career three second run for him. Hats off to Ethan Studding. Richard Regan, Jerry Morgano, Ty Casper, Scott Kincaid, and Bill Devine rounds out your top eight there in the category of Pro Street. Lester Cooper, left side of the racetrack, backing up that Ford Mustang. Randy Lynn Butner here on the right-hand side. The Johnson Horsepower Garage, Elite Motorsports Chevrolet Camaro. Ford versus Chevrolet battle right here.
So a new combination that you see, the Jim Butner Auto Center team, Elite Motorsports, Randy Lint, done oh so well over the years, driving a back eliminator machine. She's like, you know what? I'm gonna show Bo what's up. Bo knows, well, Randy Lynn does too. We're gonna go with a little gear bang in action. And they got the brain trust behind the car. Frank Gugliotta, renowned crew chief, and he's helping them out at Johnson's Horsepower Garage. That's a good looking machine. I like the color combination. They play out the horsepower, great marketing partners behind them. And now, Lester Cooper, sitting on the left-hand side. The North Carolina-based Blue Oval Ford. He's set to go. Butner's in, lights are down. Violet tire shake for Cooper. All eyes on the Napa Auto side of the racetrack. How about 4051? Right where they were in testing, I believe, yesterday, 178 miles an hour. But Randy Lynn Butner got that car A to B, and the team has got to be happy with the performance they just seen here in the opening round of qualifying at Liberty Gears Extreme Pro Stock, presented by AED Performance. Well, I tell you, Derek, that 405 is a stout run. I mean, absolutely, in the heat of the day, racetrack at its hottest point. they got to be happy with that. Daryl Stewart, next up, left-hand side of the racetrack, Florida-based. Chassis Engineering Camaro. And J.R. Carr, another one of those Johnson's Horsepower Garage Elite Motorsports entries here on the right-hand side. Carr, always known for laying down big numbers, but he's gonna have to be good right here because Butner, just went to 405. That's going to be hard to top, I think, this round, but we'll see. And how, how similar are these cars prepared? Teammates in the pit area, but they might have a little something different in each car. Absolutely. And this is, you know, they did some testing yesterday, and uh, this is a time that now you start to finalize the tune-up, get the car down the racetrack, look for consistency. And there is problems on the starting line for Daryl Stewart. So Team Chassis Engineering is pushing off. And it will be a solo run for JR. Of course, you think back to you know, years ago when Mountain Motor Pro Stock Racing was so popular, JR Carr's name is synonymous to that. Came over here to the PDRA and has done very well for himself. Move it in. Let's up on the clutch pedal and it looks exactly identical to Randy Lynn's run and they're gonna go 4.069. The Johnson Horsepower Garage Chevrolet Camaro at 177 miles an hour with a hundredth of the teammate there. Good runs out of both of those race cars at an elite motorsports power shop. Bring two more here into the uh, water box next in the category. Extreme Pro Stock. Doug Cottrell next up on the left-hand side of the racetrack out of Warsaw, Indiana. 2008 Chevy Cobalt, 825 cubic inches underneath the hood scoop. And Kirk Neighbor, the Venom, 2012 Mustang here on the right-hand side with John Cozzi race engines underneath the hood scoop, 820 cubic inches worth.
Now, third neighbor, Doug Kittrell, side by side. That Chevy Cobalt, over 100, 825 cubic inches. Sonny's class racing power. And the Macedonia, Ohio, third neighbor. Makes a, a big move into the beam. And they are both all over the racetrack out there, but legs it to the other end. 427 to 169 miles an hour for Kurt. 413, better of the two, 173 for Doug Kittrell. You go back and I'm sure on floor racing and watch how close neighbor got to the center line stride. That car ribbed her hard and Kurt just sawed the wheel back and we're not giving up yet. Seen 405, 406, 413, 427 so far in the category in the lap time in the lap time spectrum, and that is uh, now going to bring up Chevrolet Camaros. Matt Jigger on the left side of the racetrack at a Pleasant Garden, North Carolina, the Love Machine 2019 Camaro, owned by Enoch Love. Ram clutches, Kazi race engines, AD carburetors and fuel systems, Linko racing transmissions, and Stroud safety. On board that machine. And Dave Hughes, the HRE Manifolds Chevrolet Camaro here on the right hand side with the Kazi power plant. 832 cubic inches for Dave Hughes here on the right side in that Jerry Haas built machine. So they slam the door shut, walk away from Matt Giagrande. Camaro, far side of the racetrack, Dave Hughes cleans it out, starts to burning up the RPMs a little bit on the HRE manifold. Bow tie, both are out of the gate, makes a move to the center line stripe again, and eventually both cars will shove that clutch pedal in. Giagrande did it first, 490, 106 the speed. Dave lasts a little longer, gets down at 449 here, 125. Almost identical what we've seen out of neighbors Mustang. Steven Boone comes up next on the right hand side of the racetrack out of Weaverville, North Carolina, the Boone Motorsports 07 Cobalt. AD competition fuel systems. Allen competition engines, line to line coatings, and white safety. And Jordan Insulin, left side of the track, out of Lakeland, Florida, the Sea Biscuit 08 Mustang. For Dark Horse, Dark Horse Coffee Company, Golden Gate Hotel and Casino, Circuit Las Vegas, AD competition, Mincer Motorsports, and Expert Racing Electronics. All right, so the team for Stephen Boone looks over and Jordan Insulin and his crew give the thumbs up That's for the drivers to roll in and get ready to take care of business. Want to be number one? Well, you got to take down the Johnson Horsepower Garage team and go quicker than 405 with a one. Both cars uh, looked identical here at the starting line and they were in trouble early on. Jordan, 650 here. Steve is still coasting down through there at 1099. They violent 
leave for Jordan Insulin's Mustang, as well as Stephen Boone's Chevrolet Cobalt. A lot of real speed right there. You've seen him bucket around almost like a Bronco. The dark horse. Back to the drawing board. You'll see him back in Q2 later today. And here's two guys that you can't count out. John Montecavo and Dwayne Rice. Rice here on the right-hand side of the racetrack, the Chevrolet Camaro for Excalibur Race Engines. Carrillo, DNR Excavating. Montecavo with that Kazi powered Ford Mustang on the left-hand side for Montecavo Paving. Montecavo, a multi-time world champion over there on the left-hand side of the track. I'm pretty sure Dave, or not, I'm sorry, Dwayne Rice picked up the win here last season at the season opener. Yeah, that was a huge, huge deal for the Excalibur Racing Engines team. DR excavating for Dwayne Rice. Really had some momentum starting out early in 2023. Kind of rode the roller coaster per se. Seen some high points and low points and everything in between. John Monacaba did the same. Now they meet here. First qualifying session of 2024. Final call for 632. Pro 632, you need to be in the lanes, please. Final call for 632. If you're not there, you are late. So the crew's going to check the Willie Bar height of Monacavo's Mustang. They radio in. Bring it into the beam. Come to the starting line. Left hand side. We have seen the car struggle in the first 60 feet of the run. We have also seen cars go A to B and lay down a very stout performance. Let's see. John Monacavo can be one of those guys. Be at the top of the qualified order. Oh, good side-by-side -side drag race we have here in Montecavo. How about 4.061? Very nice lap at 178 miles an hour. That's going to be good enough for number two. Dwayne Rice slides to number five at 4.14.8, 173 the speed. But John Montecavo's Ford came out swinging, and by eight thousandths of a second, he's going to slide. The uh, Johnson Horsepower Garage team. Down to number three. Yeah, he splits the Johnson horsepower machines. That's been one and two all session. Yeah. Dylan Voss, left side of the racetrack. The Voss wheelie bars, bad banana machine. And Elijah Morton here on the right-hand side out of Swansboro, North Carolina, the Double Trouble 2019 Mustang for Horizon East, Carolina Utilities, Carolina Marine Works. Larry Jeffers built that machine. Allen Competition engines underneath the hood scoop, 832 cubic inches worth. and fishing rods Ford a new marketing partner here this season for Elijah Morton over there on the right hand side Dylan Voss made the trip up from Florida. Family owned Willie Bar Company waiting for Elijah Morton's crew to the final preparations on their hot rod. All walk away together. And the real estate developer out of Wattsboro. Turn on that top bulb, right hand side.
Morton wastes no time. He's into the stage beam. Dylan Boss is set to go. They turn him loose. A violent tire shake for Elijah. That car made a wild move to the left. Got a little crossed up out there. Dylan Voss had his own set of issues. Shoved the clutch pedal in early at 548. 657 for Elijah Morton. So they're going to be number 9 and 11 in qualifying right now. And our final pair in the category will come into the burnout box next. And two guys that have had an immense amount of success here at Galat Motorsports Park will line up side by side. It's going to be Chris Powers on the left-hand side. The Sunnies world-class racing engines, Camaro. And Johnny the Kid Placino here on the right-hand side for Featherlight Batteries. The 2013 Mustang. Kelling equipment, Maxima Racing Oils, and Ram Clutches. For the Kazi-powered orange machine here right side of the racetrack. PDRA Pro 632, we're missing three of you. We need you. Pro 632, we've called you to the staging lanes. We need you. Johnny Placino, Chris Bowers. Need to go better than a 405 with the one to take over the top spot. to Chris and the beam's left-hand side. Chuck Samuel set the clutch up on the car earlier in the day. Let's see if they've got the combination to make this thing work. Great side-by-side -side drag race and look at the numbers on the top end scoreboards. 407-6177 the speed to Johnny Placino's 410 elapsed time. 175 mile per hour charge. And Chris Powers is going to slide to number four. Johnny's going to be right behind him at number five. And after Q1, your number one qualifier in the category of Liberty Gears Extreme Pro Stock presented by AD Performance, none other than Randy Lynn Butner. How about that? The lady behind the wheel did a very good job in the opening round of qualifying and got that car. The uh, number one spot, which held 15 drivers, made the attempt. A little bit of brooming and grooming out there on the racing surface, and it will be time for the two wheeled terrors to take on the 660 foot race course here at Galab Motor Sports Park. Just a moment. drive tech we drive the industry going beyond the limits and advancing forward a versatile all-in-one solution we're here for you every step of the way and that's why you see fuel tech everywhere
regulators, filters, fueling champions. Good year. Those who live up. Brad McCoy out of Cleveland, North Carolina, the Q80 race team, McCoy Motorsports Suzuki. It's Brad McCoy right side. Driver not on file yet. Left hand side, but that is a Mosock motorcycle mule. You can hear the difference in it. Look at it. 443, 158, the 407, 173 mile per hour charge for Brad McCoy in the Napa Auto Parts lane. Get run by both riders, but Brad McCoy is coming out swinging in a big way. Laying down a uh, very respectable run, I want to say. You're an open and qualify. Gene Goslin up next, left side of the racetrack. The Canadian Express 2.0. Both the Strang bikes on board. And Ashley Owens here on the right hand side out of Decatur, Alabama, the McKinney Motorsports 2010 Suzuki for Vance and Hines and Fast by Gas. AFCO Racing Super Street, Super Street, we've called you. AFCO Racing Super Street presented by Mincer Motorsports. You need to be in the staging lanes. Twenty-seven at one sixty-four for Goslin. Oh, twenty-nine going by the Christmas tree. One oh eight-eight down low. AFCO Racing Super Street, we need you. Super Street, we need you. To the staging lanes at this time for Q1, please. Ryan O'Lear, left side out of Bloomington, Illinois. High performance marketing, 2024 Buell. And Brunson Grothus here on the right hand side. And Desil Art, Excel Glass Systems. To Ryan O'Lear, Team L of Illinois. A lot of wheel speed off the starting line, and you could hear it. Decides to click it off at 515. Brunson's going to go 407, 185 to go to the number two spot. Ryan's bike. Back hard in the Willie Barn. 
Kind of starts to hop in a little bit. And uh, by 330 feet, he decided, well, he's kind of over at this point. See you in Q2 and give it another hit. Eric McKinney, next up on the right-hand side at Hammersville, Ohio. The Junkyard Kid 2014 Suzuki from McKinney Motorsports, Owens Performance. Fast by gas and worldwide bearings. And Chris Garner-Jones, defending world champion left side of the racetrack to 2018 Suzuki for Redline Motorsports Media. And T.T. Jones Performance. 